Hey guys, so the other day I was watching MBT's Twitter thread. Most likely all of you have seen it at this point. Going over retro format, which ones should deserve more attention, which ones should kind of just be forgotten. And it got me thinking, we really should sit down and actually analyze all of the retro formats, figuring out which ones are actually worth revisiting. And maybe we bring back time wizard throwbacks a little bit actually go back in dive into these formats i understand we do with retro rumble a good bit but retro rumble is not a regular thing unfortunately so we need to be able to dive into these a little bit more so with that said we have compiled a tier list set up here uh this has every single format on it that is listed via format library format library has an extremely exhaustive repository of all of them as such we have translated all of those into little slots here that we will be putting on our tier list i will note there are a couple on here that are not listed on format library but i do feel need to be discussed outside of format library's tier list as they are pretty major parts of these formats with that said our ranks here are going to be top tier format these are formats that have a lot of depth a lot of solid gameplay in it and have almost no issues with them these are like the top formats and there will be probably a couple you recognize going into that category because pretty much any of them that are a top tier format have actually been discovered and have been lapped out a good bit next we have solid formats with little issues uh these are going to be formats that have maybe one or two things that are kind of holding them back from wide playability or maybe they are widely played and everyone just ignores the issues uh realistically uh, a good chunk of what we're looking for in our experimentation is probably going to end up in there good formats for a few games are formats that are fun to kind of visit for like quick history lesson effectively but are not really the kind of formats that you want to stick around with they're the kind that kind of get old fast formats with multiple glaring issues these are formats that really are held back very significantly by major issues that kind of keep them from being experimented with an unplayable garbage is unplayable garbage uh just straight up formats that should never be revisited that are completely miserable experiences with that said we are going to be starting out with yugi kaiba format it is going to be the first one that we cover here so yugi kaiba format is may of 2002 very commonly it is legend of blue eyes through starter decks yugi and kaiba it is going off of the first ban list it is an interesting experience if you have never played this format before i actually would heavily recommend you try it out it is an interesting one you wouldn't expect there to be as many decks in this format as there already are with the extremely limited pool now granted a lot of decks do look the same because la jin is kind of the best card in the game 1800 attack normal summon for no tributes but there's actually a good bit of depth to it if you actually go and watch my first ever retro rumble episode with chaotic meatball we kind of discussed that that we actually ended up bringing a lot of different decks to this a lot of what we are doing with this is you have the direction of soul control which is going to be mainly skull servant beat down which kind of ties into vanilla beat as well you have your stall options with your 2000 walls umi beat is another direction people have tried to take it uh because of great white actually being able to match la jin under umi gives you a little bit of a boost there uh dragon turbo is one that i experimented with but quite Quite frankly is extremely high roll uh because that is lord of d flu to summoning dragon shenanigans and it is not consistent and last will turbo is something that chaotic meatball actually introduced me to the idea there is that as long as you can get something into your graveyard in one turn uh last will allows you to effectively spam out your deck it's not consistent though as we discovered with that said this is actually a format that is pretty regularly played and explored and as such i think i am realistically going to be putting this into good formats for a few games it's a fun format to try out it is really fun to actually like get experimenting with but it is extremely limited by the card pool of the time unfortunately i am a huge fan of it but i truly do not think that this is a format that's going to do anything uh in the long run just because of how limiting it is however 
really fun to play with people who maybe aren't familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a great way to show the early history of the game. And every last bit of this format is cheap. You can really build like four decks for $100. It's kind of incredible. Uh, moving on to our next spot here, we have Critter Format. Critter Format takes place after the release of Metal Raiders. Format is named Critter Format after the Critter himself, Sangan, for his OCG name. The format is very much filled with monsters that can be searched by both Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest. Uh, you are moving a little bit away from the vanilla beat, but it is still a presence here because seven colored fish. Critter format is an interesting one. Yes, it is an older format, but it actually does have a little bit of depth to it, uh, similar to like pretty much all of these older formats. But you will notice that you got things like Mooka Mooka Turbo, uh, which is entirely about building out your hand size. You have Mass Control, which this is pretty much the deck of the format. Uh, if you go back and look at it in retrospect, and it's because of Mass Sorcerer. Mass Sorcerer effectively lets you play a good bit more of control because it lets you draw like crazy. Mechanical Chaser Turbo? No, actually. Mechanical Chaser is not yet available in this format. Mechanical Chaser is not present here. You would see it in decks otherwise. Uh, but Lejeune does have a uh, competition piece for uh, highest attack in the format being Seven Colored Fish. But what's really funny about that is because they made seven colored fish uh, an option for that, it basically removed Umi beatdown from the entire format because now everyone has something that can fight under Umi. It's kind of really funny in that regard. Uh, Exodia actually sees its first real playability here because of Sangan and Witch. Both of them are at two. And because of that and Last Will being able to turbo out your stuff, Basically, the only way you are losing with Exodia is if your opponent has card destruction, which is unfortunately extremely common. <laughs> As such, I will say this, if you are looking for an older Yu-Gi-Oh! format to go back to to get that real feel of the game in the early days, I would actually recommend Critter. Critter is an interesting format for sure because of all the recruiters, but there is a level of depth to it that is just not present with Yugi Kaiba, and I do think that that's something that can be experimented with very heavily. Next up is Treasure Format. So Treasure Format takes place after Critter. Uh, you have Tournament Pack 1 and Magic Ruler, Spell Ruler for those who are now looking back at it, uh, as well as the ban list that went into effect for Magic Ruler. So all of the new spells that they added in that are necessarily power players are all limited, as well as Cyber Jar. This format is complete and utter dog shit. I am sorry. Uh, it's the fact that all of those spells are now available. The game becomes such a sacky mess. Delinquent Duo, Forceful Sentry, and Confiscation basically makes this format downright unplayable. On top of that, you've got Mechanical Chaser, and if you played at the time, Mechanical Chaser was a $200 card because it straight up power crept the most reliable beater in the format. I, I am really sorry, but I do think that Treasure Format is straight up unplayable because of this. A lot of this format, the reason people even look at it is because this format was recently convinced to be put in. Uh, there's a few DM era formats that were recently added to format library that are effectively the previous format or the next format with a couple additions and takeouts. This is a format that I think could realistically just be forgotten. Tomato Control is very much an Android format thing, and it's just not. It's not fun to play this. Basically, if you're playing this format, you are playing just hand rippers uh, all the way through. Detective Rope is absolutely correct here. It is the worst parts of GOAT without any of the redeeming qualities. And I stand by that this is in the unplayable garbage camp. <laughs> so all three hand rips at three, yes, there technically was. And that was the release weekend of Magic Ruler. Uh, all three hand rips and everything from Magic Ruler was at three. The band 
Endless came like about a month later, and that's what people use as the basis for the format, because if you're playing it with the hand rips all at three, it is miserable. It is a complete miserable experience, even more than it already is. Next up is Imperial Format. Uh, Imperial Format is another one of the formats that has more recently been added in for the DM era. Uh, pretty much the main things you're looking at here are Tournament Pack 2, which changed very little, but there is one specific inclusion that did matter, uh, and Pharaoh's Servant. So Pharaoh's Servant added Jinzo and Imperial Order, and that kind of alone should tell you exactly what it is. This is old version Imperial Order, by the way. This is the one that lets you uh, basically drop it whenever you want. On top of that, you have Backup Soldier, which makes Exodia a lot more playable thanks to the previous Painful Choice. You have the Morphing Jars, both of them, because Tournament Pack 2 gave us first Morphing Jar as well. Uh, flip Control is kind of a big deal at this particular stage. Uh, it's Morphing Jar, Morphing Jar 2, to all of the Metal Raiders and Legend of Blue Eyes flip monsters. You have Cannon Soldier to get useless pieces off the board. Jinzo is once again a power play. This one is not nearly as unplayable as Treasure Format because you do have Imperial Order, which while it is a major problem card, did have a very specific use at this particular stage, being able to negate the hand rippers. You finally had something in the format that could actually counterplay just going delinquent duo, confiscation, forceful century. Uh, on top of that, Morphing Jar, while it is a hand ripper, does give resources back. There's a lot more counterplay to that here. Uh, I still don't think that this is a particularly fun format to play. Uh, Though I will say we're getting it, we're getting more into the direction of actually decent decks with this. $150 morphing jars. That is correct. If you were playing at the time, morphing jar was a nightmare to get because it was an ultra rare in tournament pack two, just like how mechanical chaser was before it. The difference there being though is that morphing jar was a limited and B was not played in every single deck like mechanical chaser was. Uh, you have tomato control, which played it. I'm pretty sure basically any of the burn decks played it basically any of the control decks and burn decks do play it which i guess does encompass most of the format because it is a draw tool at the end of the day it is allowing you the ability to get out of the bad situations flip control was anything but fun to play against that is very fair uh flip control is not a fun experience to go into Sukiomi shouldn't be legal here yeah, Sukiomi isn't even legal in this format. I don't know why they're showing it on that, because uh, Sukiomi didn't come around until Android. Uh, huh, that's weird. Point being, though, is that this is a format that, while it is very similar to Treasure in that there's a lot of aggravating things, there's also a lot of things that kind of balance it out. I'm actually going to be putting this into format with multiple glaring issues. It's still not a format that I think has the potential to be a big mainstay format, but it is not as bad as the previous one. <laughs> and with that, it's time to talk about the other big DM era uh, format that everyone loves to circle jerk. Android format. This is going to be a little bit of a touchy subject. So Labyrinth of Nightmare is the only set release between this and the previous Imperial format. Uh, on top of that, we have a couple new changes on the ban list, uh, namely the new uh, equip spells that are like the big power players got put to one, the new magic cylinder got put to one immediately, and Sangan got moved up to limited, as it rightfully should. This is actually a format that has seen substantial substantial play. One of the DM era formats that I've actually seen the most play overall outside of like Yugi Kaiba or Critter, which those two are their own camps. People like to go back to this format because it kind of is, even though Labyrinth of Nightmare changed very little, it also changed a lot. You have a new best beat stick in Gemini Elf. You have Kaiku and Bazoo. Uh, these are kind of the main two dynamics in the format. Bazoo allows you to get over practice practically anything, and Kaiku allows you to counter it out. Uh, also, with Kaiku being 1800, it matches all of the previous beat sticks, kind of making the vanilla beat sticks irrelevant in a way. You also have Jinzo, who is still really good. Yeah, Kaiku has always been a great card. It just, the moment it came out, it basically said, hey, I'm just as good as Lajin and Seven Colored Fish, 
and I have an effect attached that actually can do things. It just is all in all a great card. Golair and Bazoo the Soul Eater are both able to banish cards from the grave not having to do monsters specifically. Uh, because of that, Skull Air basically lets you turn your graveyard into a free removal engine, which is insane. And it actually is kind of an interesting dynamic in that regard. Uh, if Edison uses old pre errata, it wasn't that it was an errata, it was a mistranslation. Uh, Bazoo and Skull Air do specify on the cards that they have to be monsters that you're banishing. However, when they were originally released in the TCG, they were mistranslated to say cards instead of monsters as such bazoo control really is a viable option here water beat is water beat now you have mother grizzly to go with into this as well uh this particular format is an interesting one for sure with that said i am actually going to put uh android up in the good formats for a few games uh category i don't i will say it's on the upper side of that it's not quite it's not quite perfect enough for me to bump it up a category, but I do think that there is a lot of potential there, especially with uh, just the diversity that this format gives. It, as you can see from the fact that it's played, it is re it is actually pretty regularly played, and I do think that that is something that should really be iterated on. I stand by that. Good for a few games. Uh, it's a little bit better than Yugi Kaiba. Uh, but not something, it's not really something I think that has the depth to be considered a, a retro format to revisit. So Joey Peg, I will call it Joey Peg until the end of time. I think that is hilarious for a name. Joey Peg is a very interesting format because it is effectively Android format, but worse. This is the only format in the history of the game that has uh, Graceful Charity at two copies. Graceful Charity was semi-limited on release as well as Harpy's Feather Duster being limited and Heavy Storm being bumped to one, as well as Sinister Serpent being legal. Basically, this format has the Joey, the Joey and Pegasus starter decks, as well as it was one of the old Game Boy Advance games. Uh, and that Game Boy Advance game came with Sinister Serpent and Harpy's Feather Duster. And both of those immediately made an impact. Uh, we also got uh, Graceful Charity as one of the only other new cards. This entire format has five new cards in it. And those five new cards were so impactful that they changed everything. You have Graceful Charity, Sinister Serpent, and Harpy's Feather Duster as the big three that changed. You have Scapegoat, which as we know would become a lot more played later. Uh, it kind of required other cards to be added in to become the kind of threat that it became. And Valkyria on the Magnet Warrior, which no one played. All in all, I have played this format before. I played it with Sin Poppy on an episode of Retro Rumble, and I will say it is basically Android format, but just a little bit more sacky. I'd say it's good for a few games. Uh, I do not think that this has the potential uh, because of Graceful Charity being at two. It is a lot sackier than that. But aside from that, it is effectively the same format. Again, it only added five cards and put mostly those cards on the ban list. So Yada Format. Uh, this is a really touchy subject. Uh, Legacy of Darkness and Pharaonic Guardian are the add-ins for this. And that specifically brought in a couple of cards. You've got Exiled Force and Injection Fairy Lily, which made the Rat Toolbox actually like functional. Uh, you have Mirage of Nightmare, which is insane if you compare it with MST. You have Reinforcements of the Army, which is arguably one of the best recruiting spells in the game's history. Granted, I don't think we have DD Warrior Lady yet, so it's not as huge in that regard, but it can still search Don Salug, if I'm not mistaken. You have Ring of Destruction, which is one of the biggest nightmare cards for tournament officials. And probably the most important is Don Salug and Yada Garasu. For those of you who do not know, Hand Control was the deck of the format. Uh, you have Don Saluk and Yadagarasu able to hand rip very effectively alongside Delinquent Duo, Forceful Sentry, Confiscation. You've heard this bit before. The biggest thing though is that this is the first format where you can actually Yada lock someone, which is attacking them with Yadagarasu while they have no cards in hand, locking them from ever being able to draw ever again. Uh, and that basically is game. Half of this deck is banned today and for good freaking reason. 
Uh, this deck was absolutely ridiculously stupid. Gearfried is a very interesting kind of setup in this, uh, namely because one of the biggest ways that you could counter out your opponent putting a bigger monster on the board at the time was Snatch Steal, uh, and Gearfried basically said, you can't Snatch Steal me. On top of that, there are some experimentations with it, as you can see here from the cards that are included. You have Smoke Grenade of the Thief, which when equipped onto Gearfried would auto pop itself and rip a card. Thought the card was not relevant until 2019. Historically, yes, that is correct. Uh, Smoke Grenade of the Thief was not relevant until Infernoble, realistically, but in hindsight, these are looking back on how these decks are being played in retro sense. All of these formats, we're looking back with complete hindsight here. And as such, Smoke Grenade of the Thief does work with Gearfried in this particular format, as Gearfried, when you equip a card onto it, auto destroys that equipped card. So your Smoke Grenade of the Thief will go off, Blast with Chain will go off at this point because you can equip it on, it auto pops and destroys a card on field. Uh, Gearfried is an interesting card to play with in retrospect for that. Uh, you also have Gravekeeper, not Recruiter, don't know why that listed there but gravekeeper at this stage does have necro valley gravekeeper spy and gravekeeper's guard which formed a really solid control board especially because gravekeeper spy went to 2500 defense at the time under necro valley and that was actually relevant because the main boss that people were playing at the time was Jinzo, who cannot attack over that. I will say Yada format in retrospect does have a lot of interesting things in it. The problem though, and this is the pretty much the reason why I'm going to be placing it into format with glaring issues. The problem is the Yada lock. It, it, almost everything you're doing in this format is hand control. Uh, and as we pretty much all know, hand control is universally not fun to play against. That is entirely just one person locking someone else out of the game. And it is not a fun experience for pretty much anyone involved. Even though Gearfried is an interesting deck, looking back on it in retrospect, you have Smoke Grenade, and that's kind of what you're doing anyways. Gravekeeper is stall effectively. Fiend is interesting, but not really doing anything special. And Recruiter Control is actually a lot of the same as Hand Control. You're bringing up your big uh, Earth Threats, Exiled Force, Injection Fairy Lily. Uh, this is probably the closest to a not hand rip deck that you have in the format. Uh, but, uh, you still have Donzaluk and Yadagarasu in here, because if you attack with those, you win. All in all, it, it's kind of a little bit of a mixed bag to very heavy, uh, heavy degrees. Vampire format. Look at the decks on the list, and you will already understand what I am about to do. Thank you. Let's actually talk about this a little bit. Vampire format is interesting because it's Magician's Force and Dark Crisis. Dark Crisis did not really add anything to the format worth talking about outside of like a very couple of specific cards. Magician's Force though gave us the scientist and if you have ever played Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! and you see this card in anything, look at its ban list history. This was the first FTK in the game, and it is not hard to see why this was immediately dealt with. Granted, he was only put to one at first, but still. Uh, you've got Catapult Turtle with Magical Scientist. For those who are unfamiliar, if you get those two on the board at the same time, you win the duel. Last Will is also able to access both of them. It is just an absolute nightmare because what you'll do is you'll put both on the board. You will Magical Scientist as many times as you can to put 2100 attack fusions on the board. You will then catapult turtle them off the burn for 1050 each. And then at the end of all of that, you'll have a thousand life points. Your opponent will have uh, 650 left, at which point you can catapult turtle to tribute the scientist to burn them down to 500. And then catapult turtle tribute itself to burn for the last 500. This deck was an absolutely miserable experience to play through. And the sad part is how consistent it was. Uh, the fact that Last Will gets you to either piece of this deck, I I'm just, I stand by this. This is an absolutely freaking unplayable format in retrospect. Uh, with that said, we also have a couple of other things in here. 
Warrior Control is probably the most interesting because you do have DD Warrior Lady now. So Rhoda, even though it's at two, can access probably one of the best removal options in the game. You have Zombire of the Dark, you have Dawn's Alug, you have Exile Force, all of these things are Rotoable. And you also have Magical Scientist because I hate this. It, it, this is a miserable format. I am so glad that no one on Retro Rumble has ever asked to do this format. I do not want to play Magical Scientist FTKs left and right. And on top of that, you have Hand Control and Jarburn. Moving on, the first Tier 0 format. Uh, this has Invasion of Chaos and Ancient Sanctuary, but let's be completely fair, discard Ancient Sanctuary. We're just looking at Invasion of Chaos. Uh, Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, and Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. Uh, yeah, do I really need to say much more than that? Uh, this particular format is an absolute nightmare, especially in retrospect. Uh, because Chaos Control has gotten a lot more attention now that you realize that you can actually Magical Scientist to fill your grave. Because what you can do is just Magical Scientist things up, get them off your board. Oh look, now there are lights and darks in the grave. Uh, probably the biggest thing that is the major problem in this format. If you stick Witch of the Black Forest or Sangan in this format and they make it to your turn while you have CED in your hand, you win, like completely guaranteed you win. What you do is you summon CED, nuke the board. Either one of those searches you, Yada Garasu. Oh look, my opponent has no cards in their hand. I normal Yada, I attack for game. Miserable experience. Uh, and the sad part is this deck is just so powerful, even if you don't get to that. The amount of power situated just into those two is insane. On top of the fact that Chaos Sorcerer is legal in this format. So you even have another boss that you can go into, it's just not as common to see it. As you can clearly see here, you have Chaos Warrior, Jar Turbo, Scientist FTK is still freaking legal, and Stallburn, which is just not a fun thing. This format was also extremely overpriced because everything that you really needed for playing proper chaos control was a secret rare at the time. It was a miserable experience to be playing the game. Basically, this is a format that caused a lot of people to leave Yu-Gi-Oh, unfortunately. And as such, it deserves its spot in unplayable garbage. I'm sorry, I stand by that. We have talked about chaos format. This format was tier zero and caused a lot of changes to happen in the game's history. The most important change this caused was the creation of the first ever ban list. This is the first ever list that had an actual section of banned cards. And look over what got banned here. CED, both Sangan and Witch, Yada, Dark Hole, Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, Harpy's Feather Duster, Monster Reborn, Raikeki, United We Stand, Imperial Order, and Mirror Force. Yes, the slaughter of O5. On top of that, you have a lot of things also going to Limited here, but you'll probably notice looking over this and thinking it over, CED got banned, Envoy of the Beginning got Limited, do you notice a certain Chaos monster that's not on this list? Unfortunately, in their haste to completely get rid of Chaos, they completely overlooked Sorcerer. Uh, as such, you will notice that both Chaos Return and Chaos Turbo are major players in this format. We have Soul of the Duelist and Rise of Destiny, and I will go ahead and let you know now, this is the final DM era format. I will repeat, this is the final DM era format. GOAT format is not a DM era format. GOAT format is a GX era format. We will get into that shortly. Warrior format is the last format of the DM era, and a lot of things are still present. But basically, you'll look over this and realize this format is kind of effectively GOAT 1.0. This is a precursor to GOAT format, effectively. GOAT control is still a major part of this, but you also have warrior control. Warrior is major because at this stage, we do still have warrior returning alive down here. And as such, the Scientist FTK is still legal. If you want to play this format, just play GOAT. 
the goat has a lot of issues but this format is basically just uh, things got hit way too hard and then there's adjustments that still need to happen the fact that chaos sorcerer is like this is a is a major issue uh i will say this is a format that i do think is good for a few games this is probably the closest uh to playable outside of critter that any dm era format hits uh, but the problem entirely is that GOAT format is effectively this, but better. All right, GX era time, and as such, GOAT format time. Uh, anyone who has played this game for an extended period of time probably knows that GOAT format, prior to Edison really taking off, was the go-to retro format. Uh, the problem is that GOAT format has been labbed so much to death that there is nothing really new that you can bring to this format. It has Flaming Eternity and Lost Millennium added, as well as a couple changes on the ban list. The biggest thing though is we got rid of the Hand Rippers! Yay! And then we put one back in the format! Why?! I will say though, uh, of them being here, uh, delinquent duo while it's annoying for ripping two cards at the very least you do not get the hand knowledge from it that the other two give it's still not a good card to have in the format though i stand by that uh, mirage of nightmare for its sackiness is gone fiber jar and magical scientist are gone thank freaking god makura the destructor is in here and that's just because of some stupid things but yeah a lot of this is actually really good changes the butterfly dagger elma ftk is gone uh that didn't really come up because it's something that's so inconsistent that it should never actually come up but somehow it did uh, Sangan's back, which is interesting. Uh, we also, I believe, yeah, which is still banned here. Can you tell I don't play a whole lot of GOAT? <laughs> uh, the other big thing, though, is that Emergency Provisions was put to semi-limited, which I find absolutely hysterical to me because Emergency Provisions wasn't played because it was a good card. Emergency Provisions was played because MST was at limited and freaking Mirage of Nightmare was legal. Like, you needed a way to pop your Mirage so people played Emergency Provisions to fill that niche. It, it's not a good card. Yeah, exactly. It was Mirage of Nightmare. That's the only reason that it was played. So the fact that they, they semi-limited it at the same time that they banned Mirage is hysterical to me. In recent years, GOAT format has been labbed out to an insane degree to where Chaos Turbo is effectively just the best deck you can be playing, unfortunately. There are a lot of decks in GOAT format. There has been about every last bit of investigation into this format and experimentation that can be possibly done because you have to keep in mind go format's been labbed out since the early early 2010s and of it just naturally it's been done to death at this point i personally play zombie i don't expect to win a whole lot but i like playing zombie in this format basically any deck that can turbo up and pump its speed up into the stratosphere is going to be good here uh, Chaos Turbo is probably the most effective on that because of Thunder Dragon in retrospect. But even though it has been labbed out to death and basically the best things have been discovered, I kind of stand by it that GOAT format is one of those formats that does have very little issues. They do actually have a lot of the things solved out and the fact that they banned a lot of major problems did actually do a lot here's the thing i see i see some of you guys saying rescue cat jump stare and cyber slime jump stare these things are not nearly as bad as they will become for rescue cat uh the rescue cat otk is the fact that you can put rescue cat into the grave to summon your two beasts and then can last will directly afterwards uh gaku Geyer panda really is the main way you're gonna make be making this happen and then it can summon milus radiant as well to boost your panda into the stratosphere but last will can access cyberstein the major reason why cyberstein is not an issue yet is because it doesn't have great targets yes it does have some annoying ones because cyberstein's targets do not end the game on their own here. You do have big bodies like Master of Oz. You do have lockout board pieces like Warrior from Another Planet, Ryu Senshi or whatever his name is. But the reason why Cyberstein was not a problem yet is because its targets were not great. It had some decent targets, but nothing that was particularly a problem. However, 
Okay, so Cyber Format. If you are playing Goat Format in a lot of the YCSs that they've done recently, you'll notice that some YCSs play it in a format where Cyber Dragon is legal. It's not just Cyber Dragon that changed the game. Cybernetic Revolution did a lot of things to the game, Cyber Dragon being one of them. Cyber Dragon was probably one of the largest power jumps in the history of the game. Pretty much everyone you ask will say that Cyber Dragon is the reason the game changed. And for the most part, they're correct. Cyber Dragon is able to summon itself if you have nothing on the field. So it's basically just a 2100 attack free body in a format where most monsters would never be able to compete with that. Uh, on top of that, though, uh, you have a lot of things that got added. Uh, Cyber End and Cyber Twin, which we'll talk about. Miracle Fusion, which, while not relevant yet, would be relevant in the future, being a Fuse from the Grave spell. Uh, Dimensional Wall, which is basically another version of Magic Cylinder. And Magical Explosion. Mm. The Magical Explosion FTK. It's a problem. As we jump down here, you'll notice that we are still under the same ban list as GOAT. It is literally card for card, I think the exact same ban list. But the thing is, two major things changed. Number one, Cyber Dragon. Everyone mentioned Cyber Dragon. Everyone mentions how Cyber Dragon changed everything. But there was something else that changed as well. Tell me if you see it. Really look at this deck list and tell me. A certain Stein is now actually good. Cyber Stein has been a very long banned card, brought back to limited and then banned again. Uh, the reason why this card suddenly got really good is because we have both Cyber Twin Dragon and Cyber End Dragon. Cyber Stein now actually has targets worth a damn to summon. Cyber End Dragon, which shockingly is not the go-to summon, and Cyber Twin Dragon. <laughs> Uh, the fact that Cybernetic Revolution gave it a 2800 attack dual attacking monster means that you can pump 5600 damage out of nowhere. Though it's not in this deck uh, currently, you are absolutely correct, Rope. Limiter removal is legal. You can kind of see here where some things start to come off the rails a little bit. Uh, Cyber Stein is able to summon out Cyber Twin Dragon and Cyber End Dragon, which are both machines with really high attack values and solid effects for damage. Uh, limiter removal lets you then double their attack. Uh, so your Cyber Twin Dragon becomes a 5600 dual attacking monster, and your Cyber End Dragon becomes an 8000 attacking piercer. Uh, Metamorphosis Pre Errata. Yes, Metamorphosis is also legal here. Uh, the main reason that you're seeing it played here, though, is because uh, Metamorphosis can be used on your BLS to make Cyber Twin Dragon and end the game. Eh. <sighs> Where's the fusion spell for Citrus? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, it is absolutely miserable. And something you're going to see me very commonly say throughout a lot of these early eras is that uh, uh, this is a format that has glaring issues. I would still put it above IO format. Uh, th this is one of those formats where Cyber Dragon and the fusions change so much about the game that it became a completely different behemoth. And unfortunately, though, with Cyberstein now being discovered in retrospect, this format has become a lot worse. Any YCS that is currently playing with uh, Cybernetic Revolution legal? Why? Why? This, this format is so much better if you just go one SJC back. Thank you. Reaper format! Okay, finally, getting a little bit forward. As much as I would love to sing the praises of Reaper format, as Elemental Energy and Shadows of Infinity did a lot to actually introduce really cool things into the format, as MBT has previously stated when he went really hard on Reaper format, Cyberstein just ruins every format he is in in this era. Unfortunately, Cyberstein is still fully legal, as Cyberstein was not even discovered in the actual historic sense of the game until about the World Championship period of 2006. And as such, you're going to see Cyberstein ruin format after format after format of this era. Reaper format had so much potential. It is a very solid format in retrospect. I mean, Look at all this. There is actually a lot of really cool experimentation that has been done with Reaper format specifically. 
But Stein is in literally every deck because it is basically just a one card win condition. And unfortunately, that is a pretty glaring issue. I will say though, Reaper format is probably the most playable of the glaring issues. It really just comes down to, if Cyberstein wasn't there, Chaos Return format. So here's the thing. Chaos Return format, yes, is a Cyberstein format. However, it had a much bigger issue than Cyberstein. Uh, Enemy of Justice coming out actually basically made the format into Macro, the format. You got Banisher of Radiance, D Fissure, and Macro Cosmos. On top of the fact that you'll probably notice a certain card is still legal here. Where is it? Yeah, it's completely not on this ban list, actually. Uh, because macro became so popular, <laughs> return from the different dimension is still legal, guys. Uh, it is unfortunately, uh, this is a format completely dominated by Chaos Sorcerer and his and his prospects. Uh, you'll notice though that Cyberstein is still played. It is a Chaos Sorcerer or a Cyberstein format. Even though it is slower, it still has the Stein problem. And unfortunately, I would actually dare say this is probably one of the much lesser uh, possible to revisit formats because of that. While it does have the potential because of the control gameplay that Chaos Sorcerer uh, and Chaos Return itself does uh, employ, it is just, it's not worth coming back to. And now we get into, uh-oh, we discovered that Cyberstein exists in history. Uh, this is the format that takes place directly before Cyberstein was emergency banned in the game. Yeah, exactly, Stein Counter 4. Uh, we are in... Uh, with this Power of the Duelist and Cyberdark Impact release, Power of the Duelist had a couple of interesting things, mainly the Chimera Tech stuff, Future Fusion, Overload Fusion, uh, and you have the Chain Burn pieces, Chain Strike, Accumulated Fortune. Uh, but you'll probably also notice that uh, Cyberdark Impact did nothing in retrospect uh, for this particular format. However, it changed a ton about the game moving forward because it introduced so many stupid floodgates. It really did change a lot because of that specifically. And you'll also notice as we move into here, Chaos Sorcerer has been banned. They got sick of that. Uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict also got banned because we do still have Metamorphosis legal. They got tired of you doing uh, Thousand Eyes off of a goat token. Snatch Steel got banned. Suki Yomi got banned, which is funny. Uh, but exactly right, uh, Rope. Uh, we have the Vanities duo here. Granted, the Vanities duo is not really played at this point in time because it's kind of overkill, but you are absolutely correct. We have the Vanities duo. Vanities Ruler and Vanities Fiend both came out in this exact format. However, Special Summoning Turbo is not really popular at the time, so you don't have to worry about it as much. But Stein Monarch is kind of the deck that we need to be talking about. Because of the nature of Cyberstein, what you would regularly do is you'd get your monsters on the board, uh, Exiled Force can tribute itself off, or you can tribute off a monster in general for a Monarch. And then you can go Last Will into Cyberstein, Cyberstein pay 5k, summon one of your bosses, and kill. It, uh... <sighs> It's a format. Kind of stand by my previous statement that the this, this era is kind of downright unplayable. I really do feel like it and Chaos Return are right at the same uh, stage here. I'll put it slightly ahead, but it, it, they basically do. Ring was legal too. Yes, it was. It's it just. This is a format I do not miss under any circumstances. Chimera Tech format. I do not know why they have Machina Fortress listed here. Machina Fortress is not legal here. Just preface. This format is a weird one. Um, this It's completely dominated by the Chimera Tech OTK. As you can see, it's not even really played in retrospect at all. Uh, Machine OTK is kind of the, uh, kind of the name of the game here. Uh, what you would do at this particular stage is you would go Future Fusion, Reveal Chimera Tech Over Dragon in your extra deck and dump every single machine in your deck to the graveyard. At which point you would go Overload Fusion, banish every machine in your graveyard, and summon a Chimera Tech that had exorbitant amounts of attack 
and then you could dimension fusion back every single monster you banished. <sighs> I'm just gonna put that there. I, 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 okay, being completely fair, it's that's probably being a little too harsh on it. Uh, but I kind of stand by it at this point. The machine OTK being as rampant as it was. Uh, Dimension Fusion Turbo is also a thing that's a problem. Uh, you will see that basically any deck that involves Dimension Fusion and Overload Fusion with Future Fusion is a freaking problem. I am so glad that we only had to deal with that for so long. You would think that we are out of the OTKs we're finally getting into better GX era playability. You know me. I am a major hero stan. So understand that I mean this with all of my heart as I do this. This shit is unplayable. I am so fucking sorry. Uh, so, uh, context. Uh, Stratos came out as a Shonen Jump prize card. The intention was for it to be limited the moment it came out. It was supposed to be released with the March issue of Shonen Jump in 2007. And on March 1st, it was put to one. However, Shonen Jump likes to mail out their issues eh, roughly one month in advance to where people will start getting the March issue in February. At the time, there were no card legality dates, so the moment people had Stratos in hand, Stratos was playable. Let me repeat that. The moment Stratos was in hand, Stratos was playable. Because they had not intended this to come out until after the March 1st ban list of 2007, Stratos was playable at three copies. And look how that freaking turned out. This is Airblade. So, your basic combo was the fact that every time Stratos summons, you get to search for a hero. Uh, and your Diamond Dudes allow you to mill spells off the top of your deck to use them with no cost. Yeah, exactly. You also have Malicious. So you have Destiny Draws, Dimension Fusions, E-Calls, Monster Gates, Reasonings, all these things that you don't have to use your costs for. Diamond Dew Turbo is probably the most common name for this deck. However, Diamond Dew Turbo is not Airblade. Airblade is not Diamond Dew Turbo. Even though it says Diamond Dew Turbo, this is Airblade. The idea there is that you would load up your grave with your warriors and then using Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, you would banish them out of the game to return it back to hand. Loading up your Dimension Fusion, resummoning it, Stratos can search and pop back row at this stage. You have Dark Magician of Chaos, which has caused problems. It was a fucking mess and the fact that stratos was at three able to enable this was just a whole nother issue this was a deck that was never supposed to exist stratos was supposed to be limited the moment it released and it wasn't because of this issue so yeah fun times unplayable okay we're finally out of the hellhole Okay, we're getting into the good side of GX. This is a format that does have a pretty glaring issue, as they're already saying in the chat, Troop Dupe Scoop. So, uh, Card Trooper, on release, 400 attack monster. You can mill three to boost it up to 1900. Uh, the thing is though, it is a 400 attack monster, meaning that once you summon it, you can immediately afterwards hit it with the good old machine duplication and get two more copies, meaning you can mill more cards, meaning you're setting up your overload fusion. Card Trooper is a really, really fun card in most formats that it's played in, but this format, it kind of became an issue because of that troop dupe scoop. This is also where you start to see perfect circle monarchs pop up. The perfect circle is namely because of disc commander and malicious, uh, disc commander. Anytime it is special summoned from the graveyard allows you to draw two. Yeah. Dante serotonin seven to eight years earlier. Exactly. But you'll even notice in a deck that has no real way to use the machine OTK section, you're still doing card trooper with machine dupe troop dupe scoop is just such a freaking good good combo this is the format where the gx era finally started to develop its own identity and this is one of the formats that i actually would heavily recommend revisiting 
However, I'm between putting it in solid format with little issues at the exact bottom or good format with for a few games. Uh, I actually think it probably would go into good format for a few games, namely because Perfect Circle format does exist, which is kind of this minus the troop dupe scoop issue and also with malicious put into a box. Realistically though, this is a format that is actually a lot of fun to come back to and I would heavily recommend giving it a shot at some point. I gave it a shot for an old episode of Time Wizard Throwback way back in the day and I did end up having a lot of fun with it. Ryza was by far the best monarch back in the day. Exactly. Ryza was the best monarch. Uh, Troop Dupe is a solid format. I, I'm telling you. Uh, I really do think that... You know what? I, I, I'm I'm gonna be selfish. I'm gonna be biased. I'm putting it up in solid format with little issues. I like this format a lot, uh, even though it does have the glaring issues. Uh, I do think that this is a format that do it does have issues. I am standing by that, but it is a fun one to go back on. So zombie format. This is a really weird one. Zombie format is weird because they hit a lot of things on the ban list that actually did do a lot of things. Uh, namely, you see Car Trooper went to one, so Troop Troop Scoop's no longer a thing. Uh, Disc Commander went to one. No one was ever playing more than one anyways. Uh, Malicious went to two, as well as all of the gadgets. Basically, they did a lot right on this list, actually limiting many of the issues with Troop Troop Scoop format. Unfortunately, they did it right at the time when Illblood was released. And as such, zombies kind of became a freaking threat. Uh, you'll notice that zombies are taking up more and more spots here. Uh, this is namely because we got both uh, Illblood, which is one of the first Gemini monsters, but we also got Zombie Master. Uh, zombie Master basically lets you uh, discard a card to revive any zombie, uh, which is a problem when like, you have Pyramid Turtle, which can basically bump itself into Ryu Koki or Illblood. And then Illblood itself is a revival for any zombie. Card of Safe Return is at three, guys! This is the reason that this deck is a freaking problem in retrospect. Uh, because Card of Safe Return was at three, you could Book of Life, Zombie Master, and Illblood your stuff back and get pluses for it. It was a nightmare. And I stand by, it is not an unplayable format. However, it is a format with pretty major issues. Uh, it is going to be on the top side of that. It's it's above Reaper, but good grief, this is a format that you do not necessarily want to go back to. If you're going to go back here, either go all the way back to Troop Dupe Scoop for the absolute insanity that it provides, or go forward to Perfect Circle for a little bit more balance. So now it's time to talk about Perfect Circle. Perfect Circle is a very interesting format because only like one major thing changed. Okay, correction, a couple of major things changed. Basically, we're under the same ban list from zombie format, so we are still dealing with triple uh, card of safe return. But the biggest thing is we have Light and Darkness Dragon now. Light and Darkness Dragon by itself changed so much about the format, and it's apparent when you look at the topping decks of the, the main top deck of Perfect Circle Monarch here. Perfect Circle Monarch, uh, in retrospect, is now playing Vanity Steen, but at the time, the main thing was that you would constantly be cycling things to the top of your opponent's deck with Ryza, basically locking them up from making any significant progress, and then once you put Light and Darkness Dragon on the board, your opponent had to usually waste about two to three pieces of removal, or just resources in general, just to get rid of it because every time you activate a card, it negates it by dropping its attack. It is a really powerful card, but it caused so much interesting interaction in a format that otherwise would have been just dominated by zombies reborning themselves over and over again. You'll notice that there's a lot of interesting things here. You have Macro Monarch, you have Ocean Control, you have Diamond Dude Turbo still doing its things. This is the blood list, by the way, that you're thinking of, because this is where we have Plasma in there. It is a really interesting period of time to go back to uh, in retrospect. We even have Bazoo Return, because Return from the different dimensions still at three uh basically this is zombie format but because of the introduction of specifically light and darkness dragon it solved so many problems with the format on its own 
and as such i actually am going to stand by this perfect circle format is something that we should probably be looking more into for retro play i i think that every single era has a moment like this where there is a format that is really solid a good form of diversity that actually has a solid balance to it that is then ruined one set later by something stupid breaking the format open um, with GOAT format, you have Cybernetic Revolution coming directly after, ruining everything. Uh, with Perfect Circle, you have Phantom Freaking Darkness that came directly after. And this is where we are going to have to get into some shit. Phantom Darkness format, it's specifically YCS Houston is what we're going to be talking about, is that uh, YCS Houston happened and you'll notice that immediately you see Dark Arm Dragon decks lining the wall. Uh, that is because Dark Arm Dragon was a freaking problem. Don't worry, we will get into it. It happens every single era. I kid you not. Every era, some bullshit like this happens. Uh, I, I, this is such a weird format to talk about in retrospect, though. So, this is before any of the hits to dad happen. You have to keep in mind, Phantom Darkness format had an emergency ban list that happened. We will talk about it. Yes, this is before Caius, exactly. Dark Emperor Structure Deck is the, uh, is the dad return one that people always think about. Uh, so, as such, this deck was a fucking problem and i'm sorry if we ever go back to uh, to retrospect this is unplayable garbage it is just not worth going back to unfortunately uh airblade is more unplayable than this dad return format so a uh, couple of things here call the haunted has been banned Ryza has been limited monster reborn is now back uh, advanced ritual art is limited this is due to a really stupid otk that was using demise king of armageddon uh because demise king of armageddon can get you to a completely cleared out board so advanced ritual art had to go unfortunately uh but you'll notice light and darkness dragon and Sidra also got limited here Basically, okay, so this isn't the emergency list like I thought. This is the ban list that came directly after, and you'll probably notice that a certain card was uh, not included. So in retro play, you'll notice that Dad Return is uh, now completely unhindered because they removed Light and Darkness Drag. They removed Light and Darkness Dragon decks as the main combo that you could use to stop it. We're going even further down. I'm sorry. Yeah, Dad's at three. This format is a nightmare to go back on. Uh, there was an emergency ban list that came after the fact that I believe limited Dad and semi-limited Allure, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to pull up what the ban list specifically was. Yes, this is the point where uh, Crush Card was a prize card at the time. Uh, and it was roughly a thousand to two thousand dollars to get a single copy of Crush Card Virus. Because uh, Crush Card Virus in its prize card stint only had 20 copies released. Uh, it was a problem. There was an emergency ban list. Dimension Fusion banned. Return from the Different Dimension limited. Allure semi limited. They took Return Dad behind the barn and shot its brains out. Uh, so we're looking now at Gladiator format. A lot of people say that this is a tier zero format. A lot of people are wrong. This format is really powerful with the release of Light of Destruction, uh, because it gave us Gladiator Beast Gazarits, but it is not a perfect format by any means. Looking back now though, through retrospect, yeah, uh, Gladiator Beast kind of had a problem. Uh, the fact that you did have full access to Gazarus through Triple Bestiari plus uh, Elemental Hero Prisma at the time does kind of make this format really hard to justify coming back to. But in a historic sense, it was actually uh, pretty diverse. Uh, you had Light Sworn, Gladiator Beast was the big for uh, deck of the format, but you had Dad Return deck still, and Dad Turbo is the new one on the block. With the banning of all the stuff that made uh, Dad big, uh, you instead started to pivot yourself towards being focused on more actual like things to get Dad's effect onto the board, rather than turboing out the 
kill your opponent. Uh, Phantom of Chaos was the main way that you did that. Uh, because what you could do is you could banish your dad from Grave to copy its effect to start popping things on the board to clear up. Uh, you had Disc Commander still. You had all the Destiny hero pieces. You had Plasma. Uh, it This is where that side of it comes in. But again, Gladiator Beast kind of was the deck of the town at that point in time. Uh, you had all these really good pieces that tagged into each other. Uh, this is one of like the first true archetypes becoming their deck kind of deal. This is like the first time an archetypal deck became meta on its own. I'm not counting Gravekeeper because Gravekeeper was played more like an like a uh, piece, a little core piece of cards rather than its own coherent strategy. Uh, Gladiator Beast was a really solid thing. Uh, at this point in time because Bestiari was unlimited, because you had Elemental Hero Prisma, who could reveal the Gazarus in your extra, dump Bestiari and go in. Gladiator Beast format is now one of those formats where I actually would dare say it is a very... It's close to unplayable because of Gladiator Beast's absolute dominance of it, but does have interaction, which is a huge thing. Uh, as such, I'm not going to put it in format with glaring issues. I'm actually going to put it down here at format good for a few games. This is a format that is actually kind of fun to play. Uh, because you have a balanced version of Dad, you have Gladiator Beast finally coming into their own. It, it's a format that I actually do like to revisit. Kind of going over what we've done so far. Uh, we're done with both uh, DM era and GX eras now. As you can see, nothing has entered top tier format yet. Uh, that is because nothing is a top tier format yet. Yu-Gi-Oh! has a lot of problems, and uh, even though there are formats that are really solid in retrospect to go back on, they have glaring issues. That's because Yu-Gi-Oh! before 2010 is kind of bad. Thank you, Endy! That is absolutely correct. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! before 2010 is kind of a fucking nightmare. Uh, there is some really interesting gameplay, but the problem is there isn't a reason why you would be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! over something like Magic the Gathering at the time. The only exceptions to that is what we have in the solid formats tier here. Uh, GOAT does have a lot of issues, but is one of those formats that has been kind of lapped out and find a lot of things. Uh, Critter format has a lot of that really early Yu-Gi-Oh! feel, but the problem is... There's not really anything in that section, in the DM era at least, that you would be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! over Magic for. Uh, Troop Doop Scoop and Perfect Circle are probably the first formats what I would even consider it. However, we are finally getting into the 5Ds era. 5Ds is kind of where the game starts to shift towards that faster gameplay style. We saw it a little bit in Gladiator format, specifically in Lightsworn becoming a decent option, but the thing is Lightsworn was nowhere near consistent enough to be cons to be played at that time. It's time we talk about the big one. Welcome to the 5Ds era, Dad came back with the milk. Uh, tell a dad format. For those of you who know about the 5Ds era, you know that it started off with a freaking bang. Duelist Genesis gave us a bunch of core staple synchros. You have Stardust Dragon, Thought Ruler Archfiend, Goyo Guardian, Magical Android, all really good. You have cards that actually boost up previously introduced strategies. You have Charge of the Light Brigade for Light Sworn. That's a huge one, mainly. You have Emergency Teleport and the new Psychic type, giving you access to level two and three tuners regularly. There's just one problem. Krebens was a dark, meaning that if you Krebens into a Teledad deck, uh, you could get a powerful Synchro and Dark Arm Dragon. So Psychic Commander was released here, but Psychic Commander was not really being played yet because on release, there were no good level seven Synchros. Teledad format is actually played under uh, Crossroads of Chaos as well. So you, do, you will see level seven Synchros in the pool here. Uh, Psychic Commander was played in and out of the format. It was not a staple part. A lot of people did decide to play Psychic Commander because it accessed the level seven pool. But Krebens specifically, was the issue. Krebens being able to stall out turns by, by paying life points 
really big problem. Uh, but also the fact that you could emergency teleport into it so you could synchro it with Dark Greffer, Diamond Dude, whatever, into Goyo was a problem. Or you could synchro it with Malicious into Stardust Dragon or Thought Ruler Archfiend, both of which are major threats at this stage. On top of that, that usually put you at three darks in your grave. So Dark Arm Dragon came down. This is the point where you see the argument about the $2,000 deck. Crush Card was reprinted at this stage. However, it was reprinted in Gold Series 1 at a very heavily short printed rarity. For those of you who really want to know, it was one every five cases of gold series the card was a 250 dollar card so even though we were out of the prize card area it was a problem it was 600 bucks yeah good point it was like 250 to 600 it was a major investment yes that is correct andy this format came very close to completely ruining Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh there's the big tell most people group this entire clump of uh, formats into one big format being Teledad. Uh, this encompasses over six months of the game. Oh, cheaper than Bonfire Dia Bellstar? No. Uh, Dia Bellstar Bonfire was cheaper than this because while Crush Card was like 250 to 600, you also had Dad who was the 150 to 200 range. You like this entire like while this deck does not look that bad dad was a fucking problem yes dad did get semi-limited but that even wasn't enough the this format came very close to killing the game outright and i stand by this it is in the unplayable garbage camp Airblade should be a lot lower than this. Airblade was completely unplayable. And Teledad, I'd put it somewhere around here. Uh, you, you'll find that that's very common. Teledad format was not a fun experience for anyone involved. I understand that's something that's coming up here already. I should probably go ahead and clarify. Just because a format is tier zero does not mean it is unplayable garbage. Uh, however, early tier zero formats were not uh, playable. Teledad was unfun to play and it was unfun to play against. So yeah, this is a format that almost killed the game. However, we did get some relief. If by relief you mean potentially even more issues. Uh, so cat format, a uh, very major thing here you'll notice. Chaos Sorcerer was brought back. Uh, nothing got banned, but Dad got limited, Bestiari got limited, Goyo got limited, Card of Save Return got limited, e Telly got limited, Plague got limited, Rhoda got limited, and then a bunch of things got uh, either released or just... The long and short of it is they tried to go through and hit every single problem with those formats, and they did a really good job. The problem was Raging Battle came out right after this. It was a uh, Crimson Crisis and Raging Battle that came out very soon after. And uh, you'll notice that in this list, there's a specific kitty cat. This format is one that I have played on Retro Rumble. Cat control is a big deal in this particular format because of this fucker. Uh, you contribute a monster to inflict damage to your opponent equal to its level times 200. Dark Strike Fighter was an OTK enabler accessible as a level 7 synchro. You'll see cat control decks pop up here that will summon out Arabellum and either Dark Panther or Raikou to access a uh, level 5 and 6 pool, or just summon out two Arabellum to attack for uh, to attack for a lot of damage and mill uh, and rip the opponent's hand apart. Original Dark Strike Fighter is the closest Kamenami has ever come to printing a card that says you win the game. Dark Strike Fighter didn't even last a format. Dark Strike Fighter was banned the very next ban list after its release, and it was because of this. Uh, so you'll notice something here is that all of the deck, uh, Blackwing was finally starting to see some play. Uh, let's let's see here. Yeah, Philly Luna's list is a good uh, one that we can use for this. Blackwing finally had enough pieces to actually be playable. The big the problem though is that Gale plus Bora or Gale plus Shura, uh, eh, that's Dark Strike Fighter. Uh, it really uh, Dark Strike Fighter really did ruin a format. How do how, like how does he still FTK today? Oh yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. Dark Strike Fighter is currently even being played with its errata, mind you, in an FTK deck with Super Heavy Samurai on Master Duel. 
players will find a way that is the long and short of it players will find a way you give them enough time they will lab something uh with that said though dark strike fighter is present i am actually going to put this like down here in formats with glaring issues this is not unplayable garbage actually uh in my time playing this with axe mango for retro rumble i found that this format is actually really fun once you remove the ftk enabler uh from the from the equation uh unfortunately the ftk enabler has to be in the equation so it's not it can't go up any higher than this but i do not think that this is unplayable garbage uh, I stand by it. Cat Control without Dark Strike Fighter isn't bad. Exactly. Cat Control with no Dark Strike Fighter is actually playable in Edison format. Yeah, and Dark Strike Fighter was gone after that. Moving into Light Sworn format, uh, this is a kind of interesting one because we're going to come down here and you're going to see Dark Strike Fighter got banned. <laughs> oh. Also, Gale of the Whirlwind got limited. Good riddance. Uh, you'll you'll see a lot of things basically change their status here, uh, just to kind of clean up some problems. Crush card got uh, Crush card got banned here too. This card a safe return got banned, uh, and then a lot of the problem cards did get limited. Rescue Cat and Summoner Monk. Uh, you have Black Rose and Demise going to limited. Cold Wave is finally being dealt with a little bit. But you also see things coming up off the list, and also some other things going into semi-limited here. Chaos Sorcerer and Mizuki going to semi-limited is going to be really important for the next format that we talk about. Uh, but the reason that this is called Light Sworn format is because Light Sworn's absolutely dominated this format historically. You see Phantom, Twilight Zombie, Twilight Zombie, Light Sworn, uh, Light Sworn, Twilight, uh, Twilight, Light Sworn, Twilight. Basically, you were either playing Light Sworn or you were playing Twilight uh, Twilight Sworn. Uh, and it's because Charge of the Light Brigade. Charge of the Light Brigade has actually been out since Duelist Genesis. However, it never really got a chance to be good because of all the other issues in the format. Uh, this is pretty much the one time it got a chance to shine. Light Sworn is absolutely a house in this format uh, because of that. Plus, you have Return uh, Burial from the Different Dimension at 3. Uh, you have d things like Diva Zombie starting to pop up here. However, in retrospect, um, you'll notice that this format actually is not as one-sided as it looks. It actually had a little bit of diversity, and this is kind of because this is the precursor to Edison format. Uh, there is a lot of playability here. Uh, I would actually dare say it's probably one of those solid formats with little issues, but there is there are little issues in it. Uh, in retrospect, return uh, Burial from the Different Dimension being at 3 is a problem. Charge of the Light Brigade being at 3 is a problem. Uh, Lumina, you are able to loop uh, Luminas like crazy here. You know what? Actually, I'd probably even bump... Mm, no, i put worse up here. Uh, we're going to keep it there. It's going to be at the bottom of this, but the problem is no one's going to really ever play this format. It's really unfortunate. No one is ever really going to play this format because it's time to talk about what came directly after. One new card, Starlight Road. However, there was also a ban list that came out right here. Uh, you'll notice nothing new on the Forbidden. Chaos Sorcerer went right back up to one. Uh, all the zombie pieces that just went down came back up. Lumina gets uh, limited. Tragodia gets limited. Goyo was already limited. Uh, Light Brigade. All of like, the major like real problem cards of Light Sworn format are dealt with. Demise starts going back down because they realize uh, we might have went overkill on this. And this is... As Pedro uh, so eloquently put, this is going to be our first top tier format. Edison format is one of the best formats for playing the game in a retro sense, and I stand by that. You have so many different decks that are all playable. It, this is one of the most labbed out formats in the game, and it's still not solved. There are still so many different things you can do with this format that haven't even been discovered yet. And I stand by that this is probably one of the best formats of all time. Uh, it is gl I am glad to put this as our first top tier. Like, look at all of this. 
It is so much and I love it. Let's see here, Gemini is so good. So the funny thing is I don't even like Gemini as a deck very much. However, you know me, the hero. Uh, I'm a hero stan. I will be playing hero beat until my dying breath. Uh, this is like one of my favorite decks that they've ever made. And you'll notice that anytime I play hero in later formats, I'm almost always trying to use some kind of combination of that. But Blackwing is at a good position. Uh, it, has a it has a lot of its cards hit at this stage, but it is not overbearing. Bayou Turbo is in an interesting position because it's not overbearing since Burial from the Different Dimension got put to one. But the big thing is you'll notice that this is one of those formats that has been played to freaking death. Uh, it is one of those formats that I don't think is ever really going to stop being played. Uh, and it's being officially supported by Konami. It should continue to see play. But really, what else can I say about this, man? This is like one of those formats that's just, it's, it's perfect. And because it's so perfect, we have to talk about what came directly after. Frog format. This takes place with the Shining Darkness's release. Shining Darkness brought three decks into the format that completely changed everything. Uh, the first of them is the namesake deck, Frog, specifically the Frog FTK. Th those of you who didn't ever experience this, I'm very thankful that you never had to experience this. Uh, Frog FTK was one of the most nightmare experiences ever conceived. Uh, and it's namely because of the fact that you could basically turbo through your entire deck and then just set yourself up an FTK with Mass Driver and Ronin Totem. Uh, it seems, I know it seems like you don't have a, uh, a good odds at hitting the mass driver with all these here, but reality is all you need is one of the frogs that lets you dump your deck. At that point, you can use more AF Greed, Salvage, Hand Destruction, whatever you need to get you to that last cards, which is your mass driver. At which point you just FTK your opponent. It really is that consistent. Uh, was Valor made because of this deck? Debatably. Valor is an interesting case, but we'll get into that with Starstrike. Uh, this was like a 95% consistent FTK, and it was such a freaking problem. It's interesting because no one really plays the FTK now when you go back in retrospect, but it's because no one wants to play FTKs in a retro format. The second deck to talk about is X Saber. So, X Saber is a weird case. Uh, it only got a couple of cards. They got Bogart Knight and they got Dark Soul. And those two changed everything about this deck. Uh, namely, in that Dark Soul had a really serious problem with its original text. This is not even its original text here. Because this is uh, problem solving card text issued. Dark Soul, during this format, very specifically, triggered once in the end phase for every time it was sent to the graveyard that turn meaning that if you synchroed off with dark soul brought it back with fall troll synchroed off with dark soul brought it back with fall troll synchroed off with dark soul it gave you three searches it was such a major issue and it never got resolved until problem solving card text came along in the zexel era and as such, X Saber is going to be a playable deck as long as that is a problem. Cat Fall Troll was literally an FTK. Exactly. So here's the thing. Rescue Cat at this stage could summon Air Bellum and Dark Soul because Dark Soul is a freaking beast. Uh, as such, you could access a level 6 Synchro off of that. That's high and lay by itself. Or if you have, keep both on the board, you can summon up Fall Troll. Uh, and that allows you to revive more, synchro more, da 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 It was a problem. How is it played in retro format? Is it played like that ruling? Yes. Retro formats are played with the rulings of the era. Uh, we've actually discussed this previously, Grand Harrier, uh, back when we were talking about, uh, let's see here, back in, I think it was uh, Yada format, uh, when we were talking about uh, Bazoo the Soul, no, it was in Android format. We were talking about Bazoo the Soul Eater and Skull Lair. They were originally printed with a mistranslation that said you could banish any number of cards rather than monsters. And yes, it is ruled using the rulings of the era so yes 
in retro play, Dark Soul does work that way. High Inlay also blows out tons of decks in the era. Yes, exactly. So basically, Shining Darkness changed a lot. You have X Saber, you have the Frog FTK, and then the other side of that. There's one more deck we need to talk about. Infernity. This deck is a little bit of a very complicated issue. As people are saying up here, uh, you had a lot of people cheating in this era, uh, setting monsters in the back row so that Infernities could use their uh, handless effects. However, even without that, this deck actually had a very serious issue of being able to just turbo out things absolutely insanely well. Uh, Infernity Launcher being at three allowed you to just do whatever you needed. Mirage, you, Mirage was played at two, but realistically, with that said, this deck's main game plan at this stage wasn't even real. Yes, you had to access the synchros because of uh, with Beetle so that you could get your uh, Archfiends back into the graveyard. The main thing you're doing with this, let's be completely fair, you're setting up a couple of synchros with Infernity Doom Dragon and a bunch of barriers in the era. However, uh, later iterations of this deck would realize that you didn't necessarily need to make synchros with it. You just needed to get an Archfiend onto the board to keep the barriers alive. We've already talked a lot about this format because of that, and it's time for us to rank it. Um, <laughs> because the Frog FTK is so uh, prevalent, I am going to have to put it down here. It, uh, uh, no, it goes all the way down. Uh, it's not unplayable garbage, but good grief, it has a lot of glaring problems. Honestly, it's so chaotic, it's fun. That's kind of where I'm going with it, yeah. X-Saber format. So... Y'all like the Frog FTK, huh? No. No more of this crap. But on top of that, Rescue Cat got banned. So X Saber is not exactly in the best position. Uh, but Launcher got limited. So you'll see Infernity just gone. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yeah, this is, that is absolutely true, Andy. This is, it's time to discard cards from our opponent's hand. X Saber kind of became a menace in this particular format. You'll notice though that you see a lot of quick draw plants. This is kind of where quick draw Dandy Warrior is still, still really trying to stick around. Uh, but X Saber starts to kind of creep in as like a deck that is really powerful here. You'll also notice that Scrap is starting to peek its head in. Uh, but this is actually uh, where we hit Duelist Revolution. Duelist Revolution changed a lot. Uh, main thing though that it changed was you'll notice in a lot of these decks, Effect Veiler. Effect Veiler is a hand trap that kind of redefined what a hand trap could be. Previously, the only hand traps of its kind that did what it did was like DD Crow, and that really was only played in specific instances. Uh, X Saber was one of those decks that just was consistent. Uh, keep in mind, Dark Souls still didn't have an errata, so it still worked the same way. Uh, but you'll also th see things like Machina Gadget start to creep in. Infernity is still around, though it's heavily limited in its power level. And Black Wings is here, Scrap starts to creep in. Honestly, this format is really solid, all in all. Uh, but yes, uh, X Saber is kind of a blight on the format. And now looking back at the retro play for it. Oh, look at that. X Saber. X Saber. Yeah. Look, I, I stand by that this format is not as bad as people think it is. But it, I think it's still going to have to go somewhere in this range. Uh, it It's not a format that I particularly want to go back on. Uh, yeah, well, the Solemn Brigade was even better at this point because Solemn Warning was still at three. Also, duality. Star Strike format. Star Strike format's an interesting one. It's an interesting one to talk about in retrospect, for sure. Uh, in the in the time frame, you see Gravekeepers absolutely dominating this particular format. In retroplay, you'd think they're better dominating here, but they actually have a pretty decent spread of representation. Uh, this format actually has a lot of decks in it. Uh, despite what this uh, thing shows. I'm gonna probably get a lot of flack for what I'm about to do here, but uh, <laughs> I, I like it. I actually really do like this format. Yes, Gravekeeper having Royal Tribute is a problem, but aside from that, this format actually has a lot of interesting things that you can do with it. it I'm sorry, but like, Yes, we'll look back on YCS Atlanta here, and Gravekeeper was a dominant force. Completely understandable, it was dominant. 
But now in retrospect, you also look back, you see X Saber, Sinker Plant, Light Sworn, Blackwing, Volcanic Quick Draw, Machina Gadget, like Twilight Zombie, Anti Metastun, eh, whatever. Uh, but like Infernity was still playable to a degree, Frog Monarch was still here. Like, and then there's also Scraps. Uh, Scraps wasn't in that particular uh, tournament, but let me see here. Where is it? I know Scraps. Yeah, Scraps is starting to top here. Like, it. <sighs> It's a really interesting format that honestly could really be dived into a good bit more. Uh, I do think it actually deserves to be looked at a little bit more, but the only issue is the stigma attached to it because this is Gravekeepers. This is where Gravekeepers got really good because they got Recruiter, they got Descendant, they got basically their main loop. And people look at it badly because of that but this is honestly a format that has a lot of bones to it and it needs to be labbed out more uh yeah absolutely right Laymass. it is kind of like it's edison light uh however you're playing with more modernized tools than you are with just plain old edison and i do think that it needs to be looked at more 6am format i'm just i'm gonna go ahead and skip straight to that uh I'm sorry, 6am lovers, but even though this only had one, uh, one tournament, and even, even though it didn't technically get classified as a tier 0 format, if this format held for more than one weekend, this would have been tier 0. I'm sorry, but the fact that they let 6 Samurai have triple gateway for even a weekend was a massive issue. And uh, it, this format is completely unplayable going back to it now. I'm sorry, but if anyone goes back and actually labs out this format, you'll come to realize that Six Samurai was way more of an issue here. This really should have been a tier zero format. But the thing is, it was quelled so quickly that it never got that distinction. Uh, and for good reason too. Fuck this format. Yeah, no, this is absolutely correct in Rage Peacock. Uh, Six Samurai was just released then, because Storm of Ragnarok had just come out. Uh, luckily, by the time we got to the next format, uh, the Six Samurai stuff was handled, but still. Trishula format. Between the Six Sam format and now, we've had two releases. Uh, the big one that the format is named after is Hidden Arsenal 4, which is where Trishula was released. But the other release that we got here was Extreme Victories, which was the last core set of the 5Ds era. Uh, that's what gave us Reborn Tengu. Uh, so, understandably, this format is a little bit more complicated, so to speak. Uh, looking at it historically, you've got a lot of interesting things. You've got Sinker Plant, Infernity, Six Sam, Macro Stun, Machina Gadget, Herald Agent, Tengu. Yeah, T Tengu is the big thing, is Tengu got released here. Uh, but kind of looking over it, this is actually a, pre it's a pretty diverse format, all things considered. C but the thing is, it could be better. The problem, though, is that Sinker Plant at this stage was effectively Trishula Turbo. Uh, your goal was you were making at minimum two Trishula in a turn and hand ripping your opponent to shreds. Uh, and as such, even though this is basically a uh, Tengu plant format, just with a couple of minor changes, I mean, even the ban list is kind of just prepping you for the onslaught that comes. Uh, I'm going to say it's a good format for a few games, but it should not be played heavily outside of that. Unfortunately, uh, Tengu Plant kind of does just what it does, but a little bit better. If Trishula format was Tenku Plant, but just a little bit worse, Librarian format is a lot worse. So Librarian format took place in the national circuit of 2011 because we had gotten the Shonen Jump promo for TG Hyper Librarian right before this. Uh, in the EU, it was given out as a prize card for the individual uh, nation's national tournaments. Uh, as such, uh, Synchro Plant got a lot worse. Uh, you have Trishula, which is usually uh, one to two copies, but you also have TG Hyper Librarian at two. As such, every time you sync or summon, you're getting your materials back, and it kind of just became a problem. YCS Indie is probably a good example of this. Yeah, here we go. The main idea of this is to turbo through your deck as fast as possible using Hyper Librarian and then Trishula to hand rip. It was kind of a problem. And yeah, as 
as Pedro actually put it, Maxi started to become relevant uh, pretty hard here uh, because of what it did uh, specifically to these decks. Similar, So similarly, I'm actually going to knock it down here to format with glaring issues. Uh, Trish format is a little bit better than it. It really is just the one card difference, plus the uh, additions of the original Exceed pool. Tengu plant format. Start of the Zexal era. We have Generation Force now and a ban list that came through and did what needed to be done, but also did what didn't need to be done. That is exactly correct, Lamas. We need to talk about this. Tengu Plant format is fun. It is a lot of fun, but... I wouldn't consider it a top tier. And that is absolutely correct because what Lamas guy is saying, it's real. It really is BLS's issue. Uh, Tengu Plant is so close to being an actually really perfect format, but BLS being legal does mean you just have blowout games, and it's not fun to deal with that. Once you look past that, though, this is like one of the most diverse formats outside of like Edison. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'll I'll give it to him. I'll, I'll give it to them. It's not as good as Edison, but yes, it is a top tier format. The one card does not break a format. There's plenty of cards I would want taken out of Edison, but just because of that, yeah, this is a top tier, realistically. There are so many different ways you can take decks in Tengu Plant that honestly, this is really solid. Also, the early exceeds pool really does a lot to enhance it. Yeah, exactly. It's... It, you would either have it at the bottom of top tier or at the top of solid format with little issues. Realistically, both of those are uh, very valid for this. I'm going to be completely uh, biased here. I'm going to move Perfect Circle above GOAT. I like Perfect Circle too much. <laughs> The point being here is that this format does have a lot of diversity. It is being played at the YCS uh, for Vegas for the team YCS, which even still, I think that this is actually going to be a solid uh, format to work with. I do think that there are better. We will get into that. I do think that there are better formats to work with on this, but I also think that this is probably one of the more interesting ones to come back to, for sure. All right, time to talk about the elephant in the room, Underworld format. Uh, so this is a really uh, complicated one. Back when Tengu Plant was first being labbed out, and I'm talking like a while ago, uh, back even when I was doing Time Wizard throwbacks, Tengu, Tengu Plant was still being lapped out at this stage. At the time, Dark World was legal to use. Dark World structure deck came out between uh, YCS Toronto and YCS Columbus of, of 2011. And in retrospect, Dark World ruined the format. Like, it's not shown here because the only event that we have is YCS Columbus, but through labbing out this format, Dark World completely ruined the format and made it unplayably bad. Uh, as such, we are actually going to go ahead and put drop this down here. It really is sad to say that. Uh, all, the, all the popular decks that you see here are directly from YCS Columbus, as Underworld format isn't really one that's heavily played. Um, but unfortunately, uh, people at the time just did not realize that Grapha was insanely powerful. Yeah, this is correct. It, it is a case of people at the time just not realizing the power that they had on their hands. It is one of the few times where, a re in retrospect, the format absolutely is dog water bad. Uh, and Grapha is the reason for this. So Shockwave format. Despite the name, this is not just Photon Shockwave, this is Order of Chaos release as well. Uh, so basically, this is where the Exceed decks start to actually do things. Uh, you have Dino Rabbit as your main one, you have Wind Up, and you have Insector, basically forming a triangle of decks. Uh, these three are the main playable decks for this particular format. Uh, 
basically we're looking at the triangle format with this one uh, between dino rabbit wind up and insector historically dino rabbit took the main portion of this and there's a very specific reason for that shockwave format is the last format where priority is a thing as such dino rabbit doesn't really have a counter uh because you can go normal summon the rabbit and before your opponent has a chance to veiler you you go rabbit effect to banish it makes it to where the deck had actually no viable counter when it was going first and as such as much as i actually do like this format it, it kind of does have to drop down to here format with glaring issues for sure on the flip side of that uh, is Long Beach format. Long Beach format is one that I actually very recently covered on Retro Rumble with Nash. And honestly, this is a format that has bones. I actually would dare to, I'm going to go ahead and say it is a solid format with little issues. Uh, I'm going to put it below GOAT though. Long Beach format is one of those that it is a triangle format between uh, Dino Rabbit, Wind Up, and Zoo. However, Wind Up does not have access to Shockmaster yet. Dino Rabbit now actually has a counter because priority was taken away from it. And also you have the Chaos Dragons available at this point. Like, yes, the, the popular decks don't really show it here, but Chaos Dragon is a uh, viable point. Is Hunter banned? No, but now every single deck in the triangle has a counter going first. Hunter may not be banned, but Maxi is legal. And Windup really is the one deck that Maxi actually hurts, and it helps in that regard. Uh, you also still have Dark World, 6am, and Hero Beat, all of which are decently viable. And even though it didn't happen at this particular event, you also have Chaos Dragons. You have Light Pulsar. You have Eclipse Wyvern. Like, it is... Like, this format is a lot deeper than people realize, and I really would wish that people actually give a little bit deeper look into Long Beach, although this is not my favorite early to mid Zexal era format. I will go ahead and say that now. And no, it is not Tengu Plant either. A bit too similar to other formats, probably. It is extremely similar to Shockwave format. The only major difference there is the fact that priority was taken away. But priority being gone is the main reason you would be playing that format to begin with. Uh, that, okay, fair point. Fair point. I think I'll bump it down to a good format for a few games because we're about to talk about the other one. Correction to what I said. Um, Long Beach is great. It is a good format. But if you wanted to actually look at the Zexal era like that, you're probably going to look at Dino Rabbit format. So this is also similarly post the priority shift, but now also has access to Galactic Overlord as a set. Uh, this made it to where Hieratic was an option. It made it to where Insectors now had Ladybug. And now we actually have a playing field here. This is the version of the format that probably has had the most experimentation, uh, which even still, it's only seven tournaments post the uh, actual historic events. So it's not too much in that regard. But the big thing is the fact that now Insector was historically the weakest of the three triangle decks. It still is, but now it actually has bones because of Ladybug. It has an ability to play on turn one. Uh, on top of that, Chaos Dragons has now been discovered as an actual pro uh, proper threat in the format. You will see that Wind Up is still playable. Dino Rabbit still doing its Dino Rabbit thing. Chaos Dragons is here now with Future Fusion, which is wonderful. Basically, it's the same format, just a little bit more built out. I love how Dino Rabbit has been a deck for three and formats and just now has a format named after it. It's because this is a this is a period of time where Dino Rabbit was like the go-to thing. Was Wind Up a TCG exclusive? No, Wind Up was not a TCG exclusive deck itself. However, it did have TCG exclusive parts. Here, let me pull up a list here. Uh, so the biggest part that was TCG exclusives were Wind Up Rabbit and Wind Up Shark. Both of those were TCG exclusives at the time, which is why you did not see this deck perform well at Worlds. Uh, on top of that, Tour Guide is TCG exclusive. So is this, is this around Macro Rabbit? I want a case turn. This is uh, around basically the same time as Macro Rabbit. Uh, Macro Rabbit was kind of on the fringes at this stage. As such, uh, because I've bumped this down thoroughly, I am going to bump up Rescue Rabbit format into solid format with little issues. I actually think that the triangle nature of the format, as well as the access to hand traps and the lack of priority does make this a format that is worth playing unlike what came directly after
Okay, it's time to talk about windup format. So the reason why windup format is named now rather than any of the previous times is because windup took a fundamental shift here. Uh, with the ban list that came down, we saw significant changes. First off, Future Fusion was banned, which basically took Chaos Dragon behind the shed. Uh, it wasn't completely gone, but it was very heavily uh, hit. The second thing is that Dragonfly and Hornet both went to one. Uh, even though Insector was the worst of the triangle format decks, it was the one that did the best at Worlds because it was the one that had the most pieces at Worlds. Tour Guide was a TCG exclusive, so Dino Rabbit didn't do as well as it should have, and Windup was missing half of its deck. So Insector really was the best suited to going into that tournament. On top of that, you see Darkness Metal going to one. This is because of Gustav Max, which is coming out soon, uh, and specifically that with Heratic. So unfortunately, this got just taken out early. And then Carriers and Mighty went to one. You might have noticed that the wind-up hand loop seems to have been hit. Why did it do so well? Well, there's a little card that didn't get hit. Look over this wind-up list and tell me if you notice what problem card is present. There it is, that's right, Shockmaster. Shockmaster was released as a Shonen Jump promo at this particular stage, and oh boy it was a problem immediately was a problem because of windups windups were able to churn out three level fours so freaking fast that shockmaster was so easy to make and as such it was able to lock out basically any other deck in this format uh, as such i would actually go as far to say that this is a really major issue format i'm actually going to bump it all the way down to there we're not, we're not even going to bother taking a look over it. It's the fact that Shockmaster is such... A, uh, Shockmaster is such a freaking problem. Windup Factory does give them way too much search power as well, but you have Windup Magician and Shark, which basically gets you everything you need to get going right then and there. Because you can go Windup Magician, Special Summon Shark, with Magician Effect because Shark Special Summoned uh, is able to summon another Magician, at which point you can actually go Shark down to three Magician Summon un like, just and keep going. It was a fucking problem. Um, or you could just ignore that and use the three that you have there and make Shock Master. It, it, long story short, this format was had a bunch of glaring issues, but Shock Master was the major issue of the format. Is it time? Okay, good, it's time. It's time to finally talk about the main format that I wanted to talk about with this particular uh, discussion. With the wind-up format happening there, there is a long gap before we get to our next format. A gap of about, of about six months. Uh, in this time period, you had Abyss Rising, which released Mermails. Uh, you had Cosmo Blazer, which was released Fire Fist. And most importantly, you had Hidden Arsenal 7, which completely changed the Exceed pool and gave us Evil Swarm. This is Meadowlands format. And I stand by, this is probably the best format to be considered for that slot of like the third big format um, that we can explore with retro play it has so many viable decks available to it it has so much depth and diversity that hasn't even been touched and it is insanely good like you'll see that there's meadowlands madness which is a tournament series that is run regularly that i do honestly think needs to be given more attention and it really has solid potential as a format this is based off of ycs meadowlands which happened the week before dragon rulers came out and it is insanely insanely good let's kind of look over some of these formats here real quick we got mermail mermail is kind of the staple piece of the format spellbook is present here and there but it's not nearly at the power level it needs to be it's more like fate control at this stage dino rabbit fist is uh, about as close to four axis fire fist as we had at that stage it's basically tiger king turbo but it does a lot of things uh because of because you can either go into the dinosaur side with the rabbit or into the gene warp werewolf side of it into the fire fist side which is really solid all things considered uh exceed infernity is one of those decks that popped up here uh the main idea here is the fact that laval Vol chain which came out in hidden arsenal 7 lets you load up your graveyard and set up your infernity launcher play so you can just go freaking off 
It is insanely combo balls to the walls, and it's a really fun deck to see. Evil Swarm. While Evil Swarm is known as Ophion Control, and it is Ophion Control also in this format, there's only one deck it really takes out with that, and that's Mermail. Everything else actually has legs against Evil Swarm, and it basically does kind of become a Defend the Castle deck with Ophion, but it's not an end-all be-all, like, actual threat. Uh, you have Six Samurai. Six Samurai is still heavily playable in this format because this is after the point where we discover that Elder plus Ascentism equals Kagemusha equals Naturia Beast. This deck actually has some legs as a combo aggro deck. Uh, you have Bubble Beat, which is my personal pick for this format. Uh, you have the ability to basically summon a monster, set your hand, special summon Bubble Man. Uh, and that gets you access to Blade Armor Ninja, to Heroic Champion Excalibur, Shockmaster is in the format, but because Windup has been dealt with at this stage, there is no deck that can consistently make Shockmaster every game like Windup was able to. So while yes, it is in the format, it is not nearly as big of a problem. The long and short of it is there is a lot of diversity here. You even see decks that you wouldn't expect to see. You see Chain Beat down here using the ra uh, Rabbit, Thunderbird, and Black Garden combo. You have Gladiator Fist, which is the Fire Fist Gladiator Beast uh, there. Uh, you have Dino Gladiator Fist, again, more, more combos with that. Synchro Plant got a little bit of their pieces back going into this. Teledad's even here, even with all of its hit pieces hit. Uh, there's a lot of things in this format that are really encompassing of the early to mid Zexel era that honestly, I think that this deck, this format is a fun time all around. If people find a way to get out Shockmaster consistently, it's over. People have. It's called Thunder. And unfortunately, Shockmaster just isn't as good because not everything is locked specifically to one or two uh, to eat to monsters like it is in other formats. There is a lot of diversity in what spells can actually do in this format. And as such, it actually does. Shockmaster isn't a win condition anymore. It's very good, do not get me wrong, but it is not an end all be all win con anymore. We have dark hole now it's not it's not complete lockout anymore uh as such and i know for a fact i am going to get hate for this i really do think meadowlands is a top tier format i have said it once and i will say it again meadowlands is the edison of the zexel era it has the most potential to actually look into it and like really craft a nice intrinsic and interactive format and I really do think that this is the one. If any format is going to get attention, Meadowlands needs to be that one. So one week later, also known as Baby Ruler Format. Uh, it's called Baby Ruler Format because it is Dragon Rulers with the babies. Spellbooks are also present, and so is Evil Swarm to an extent. It's not really shown here because they only have the one Dragon Ruler Format thing here. And unfortunately, they do not show a whole lot of uh, results from this time period. But the long and short of it is you had three dragon rulers and two baby rulers of every attribute in your deck alongside things like Super Rejuve. It was an absolute, like, it is one of the most intrinsic formats where you can show your skill. It's not a tier zero. I stand by that. This format is not tier zero. However... It has a lot of legs to show what you can do with a format. As such, I am actually think I think this is probably going to be what I get the absolute most hate for right here. I am actually going to put it all the way up at what is effectively our beer, our B tier. It is one of those formats that going back on it, it has so much like potential to show skill that I do think that it is worth the revisit. I know I'm gonna get hate for saying something like that. Now let's actually talk about what I'm really going to get the hate for, Ravine Ruler Format. This, I think this is actually a borderline. This is gonna be the one that's a borderline here. I would honestly even consider putting it right below Tengu Plant in a top tier format. This is a really, really solid one on retrospect. Yes, it is very heavily dominated by the Dragon Rulers, but not in a tier zero sense. There are plenty of other decks in this format that actually do have the ability to play. Again, though, 
can't really show them because they don't really have results on format library format library please update your page to have more historic results for things in the zexal era and beyond i kid you not would save a lot of effort D ravine ruler format is a really interesting thing so the babies are banned that is the first major thing. No babies, no super rejuve, and also no spellbook of judgment. You just have the rulers and the, like, you have the big rulers and a lot of their auxiliary pieces. The thing there is that historically, if you look at it, yeah, historically, when you look at it, yes, it was very heavily dragon ruler dominated, but there are a lot of options in this you are not locked to pure dragon rulers there are a lot of ways you can take this yes you have pure dragon rulers with ravines you also have dragoonity rulers using the dragoonity package to actually access things that you wouldn't be able to access otherwise you have karakuri girgia starting to actually pop back in here specifically girgia because if i'm not mistaken this is the stage where we had girgia yeah we have girgia gear which is a trap that you guys would probably know from hat format as one of the main things that actually gave Gear Girgia its legs. Uh, is this where people were citing Obelisk for the mirror? Yes, Obelisk was a side deck option for the mirror match. Uh, it's weird that they do not play Vanity. Yeah, historically Vanity's emptiness was played in the side and maybe in the main, depending on the player. Uh, it really got popularized as a main deck option in in Baby Ruler format by Patrick Hoven. Uh, and now you'll see, you actually do see a lot of Vanity's emptiness in the main. Uh, however, you also have things like a, a Stardust Dragon Assault Mode Dragon Rulers. Uh, you have Evil Swarm, which is still an option. Spellbook, which is still an option. Fire Fist is fine finally here. Firefist hasn't had a chance to shine yet and it's actually finally getting it. Uh you have, like there's a lot of things in this format. I unfortunately I can't really show it because they only have San Mateo here, but there are multiple YCSs in this format that actually show some distinct diversity in this format. Uh here actually, let me so like YCS Toronto, which was also this format. You'll notice yes there is a lot of dragon ruler here but you have distinct diversity here. We have spell books, we have black wings, we have fire fist, infernity, mermail. Uh, plant dragon rulers have basically fallen out of favor uh, as more experimentation is done. But there is distinct diversity in this particular format. And I do actually think that it is something that needs to be revisited. This is a format that I actually do think can be revisited. I don't think it's going to be a top tier format, like how I think Meadowlands it. Oh, well, no, I guess it, I do. Eh, I'm going to bump it down. I don't think it's a top tier format like Meadowlands. However, I do think that it is a very solid format if we do look back on it. It needs to be more heavily lapped out. Though they do not include it on their uh, format list here, there is a difference, though, between Ravine Ruler and Sixth Sense Ruler. Everything that I just said about the diversity of the format and how interesting it is and how you can actually find really interesting playability completely goes out the window once Sixth Sense is here. Sixth Sense completely ruined that format, which is why I am putting it at the bottom of Unplayable Garbage. It is a card that never should have existed. It is the worst format uh, out of what we have talked about so far. It is worse than Airblade. Let that sink in. It is worse than the format that should never have existed, and it lasted for two months. So Firewater format. While I do not like this format as much as Meadowlands, I do recognize that it has a lot of solid potential. Uh, the problem, though, is I know from playing it, Bujin is a lot better than people realize because of, uh, was it Kaiser Coliseum? All in all, though, Firewater format does have a lot of the same diversity that Meadowlands has, but it trades the pre-Dragon Ruler decks of, like, Wind Up and Zector, Dino Rabbit, all that. It trades all of that for the Dragon Rulers, um, and that really is a problem. It trades a lot of that early Zexel for more late Zexel. Uh, Constellar, honestly, is a solid deck as well. Uh, the only reason it's not playable in Meadowlands is because they are missing uh, Sombre. That's his name. Uh, but we also have things like Mythic Rulers here. You have Karkuri, Girgia, and Gadget are coming back in. Uh, you have Hieratic Ruler, which is using the uh, the Dragon Shrine package, which is really solid. Harpy finally got a chance to shine here. Raccoon is a solid, like, 
rogue deck option. Like, this format does have a lot of diversity, and similarly to Meadowlands, needs to be revisited. I would I put it above Ravine Ruler here. I do think that it needs to be, uh, we do need to have a look through on that one. All right, talking Vegas format, YCS Vegas. So the main thing that is different here is we had, uh, we have basically Silent Honor Arc. It, it, it really does kind of come down to that. Uh, Silent Honor Arc did change a lot. This is basic, Vegas format is effectively hat before hat. Uh, we did not have the uh, we did not have the artifacts that we needed for this to work. The hands were not yet available to us, and trap tricks were basically limited to just Mermelio, and it it's just not nearly as good as any of the other ones. Uh, as such, I am actually going to drop it down here. It's not super bad, but it is pretty glaringly bad. This is the last of the big formats that are currently being played right now, heavily. Uh, hat format. Uh, we're looking at Dragons of Legend, Primal Origin, uh, which gave us uh, the artifacts, the Sylvans, and the hands. Those are the big things. And hot take, I do not like this format. Uh, it is not that it is a bad format. It is that it is not a format that matches my play style. I do not like control. It is not a deck style that I enjoy playing, but uh, it's just not a fun time. All in all, this is absolutely correct, uh, Kirkies here. Uh, we have three copies of Soul Charge. It is just not a fun time to be in, around, be in and around the format. There's a lot of diversity here, as with any format that's been lapped out to the extent that this has. But at the same time, I'm not going to judge it too harshly because of my own personal playstyle, I do recognize that this is a format that has a lot of really solid bones. And you can even see that just by how many events have been played with this format. Like this is one of the biggest formats. Honestly speaking, this is probably a top tier format. Uh, I I will go ahead and place it up there. Uh, I. It's, it's above Tengu Plant, realistically. I don't think it's higher than Meadowlands. I really do think Meadowlands needs to be explored more. Uh, but regardless of which, um, I do recognize that people like this format for what it is. It is a solid one, all in all. Format Library has this uh, listed as Chanel format. Realistically, this is Duelist Alliance format, as most people colloquially know it. This is the format that completely changed the game. Uh, Duelist Alliance gave us Shadals, Burning Abyss, Teller Knights, and Yang Zing as the main driving forces. Uh, in reality, it gave us Shadal and Burning Abyss. Teller Knight is popular in historic sense, but not in retro play. Uh, here, we can pull up, uh, this is the most recent retro tournament for that, and you'll see that Burning Abyss and Shadal are basically dominating this space. Uh, Shadal with Shadal Fusion did completely change a format, but you'll also notice Vanities at three. This is where just the idea of what a deck is supposed to be able to do changes. Should all fusion changed a ton about that, but Burning Abyss also changed a lot about that by being able to spam out rank threes like No Tomorrow. While I do recognize that this is a format that changed a lot about the game, and I do recognize that this should be recognized as a really good format in that regard, I am going to get hate for this, but I'm not even going to put it above B tier. Uh, Duelist Alliance has some really glaring issues, and Vanities and Soul Charge is the main one. I would rather look at uh, the format a little bit later, and we will get to that. There is a version of this format that is playably great, and we will cover it, but we have to get through uh, a lot of the early Arc 5 to kind of get there. So this is listed as Burning Abyss format. In reality, this is New Challengers format. Uh, New Challengers gave us a lot more tools for Burning Abyss to use, which is already arguably one of the best. What do you mean for? New Challengers was basically where uh, we got more Burning Abyss tools, which made the deck better. We also got El Shadal Fusion, which made the deck a lot more explosive. Uh, effectively, this format made it to where you're playing Burning Abyss or you're playing Shadal. Uh, Teller Knight and Yang Zing, I don't even know why those are listed in there. And as such, 
we are uh, looking mainly at those two here. Uh, I wish I had the results for this particular format, but this is where people really realize that the the, the game has changed. Cleefort is also legal here. No, Beatrice is not available yet. This is when Burning Abyss was first coming out. You also have Cleefort that is available in this format, but it's not quite to the stage that it needs to be at. Uh, and as such, uh, it's just not really as solid. Uh, best thing that this format did was put Soul Charge to one. Complete, full stop. It put Soul Charge to one, and it is really good for that. But it is still not really a playable format in that regard. We're going to have to drop it down a good bit uh, and move on to uh, what is a better version of this format. ICS Charleston format. Uh, so with this... Uh, a couple of discoveries really came across. Uh, that being that uh, Denko Seca is a freaking house. Uh, here, let me let me pull him up. So Denko Seca came out, new challengers, uh, but wasn't really discovered until this point. Denko Dolls just kind of became a house of a deck. Uh, on top of the fact that you have Artifact Shadal, which is already kind of a thing. Uh, Burning Abyss is still really good. Cleefort, though, is finally getting a little bit of the recognition that it deserved. Uh, namely, it, it got its stuff from Secrets of Eternity that actually bumped the deck up a good bit in its power level. Uh, we also got Volcanics here. Uh, namely, in that Volcanic got uh, Blaze Accelerator Reload. Uh, this card came out in Secrets of Eternity as well. Secrets of Eternity! Anyways, uh, this card actually made Volcanics a playable deck in the format. Uh, if you are looking for a format to kind of show off the Shadal Burning Abyss uh, kind of counterplay with uh, with other decks included, Charleston format is a solid one to do that. I would honestly put this up in solid format with little issues, uh, probably just below Dino Rabbit. Actually, uh, this is a this is a format that actually can show off the power of those two decks very particularly, especially in context with how everything else was going. Uh, we lost Super Poly. Thank goodness, no construct BS in that regard. Uh, but we also went Moral Talk to one. Dark Strike Fighter came back with its errata. Snatch Steel was legal. This is pretty much the main damper on this particular format is Snatch Steel being at one. Uh, and then we, we have a bunch of things that are coming off the list that just have been on there for too long. Um, all in all, Charleston is a super interesting format to look into. Uh, although I still don't think that this is the format that we should be looking at uh, for our uh, early Arc 5 uh, investigations. I'm going to show this to you now, give you a couple seconds. Thank you. Necros format. Here's the thing. I would say that this is a solid tier zero format, that this would actually be considered for a tier zero format that actually had some real bones to it, but it is entirely ruined by this tub a tub of fun. Jin, Releaser of Rituals, deserves to rot in hell. And I stand by that. This deck would have been such a cool addition to the Shadal Burning Abyss Cleefort like dynamic if it didn't have Jin. Jin legit ruins this format completely. And like you you even see there's a lot of uh there are a lot of things that where you notice that people just straight up are not playing Jin. it's because it's banned in pretty much every retro play version of this format it was yeah just necros was great but Jin ruined it absolutely there was a gentleman's agreement in retro play to not uh to not play Jin. But what I think you're actually referring to is the Patrick Hoban Road of the King thing, where is, there's a thing to side out Jin to make the match more skillful. Um, that is a thing that happened at this point in time. There are rules documents now updated to where you cannot do that. It is... My point being is that legitimately Jin ruined this format. And now it's time to talk about the format that I actually think has the potential to be the arc, early Arc 5 format. It's time to talk about Clown format. This is probably the most interesting format that we can talk about because 
this is like a one to two weekend period here. You'll notice Laval Chain and Jin are both banned. Sure, it is limited, but my point here being is that with, with Jin gone, this is the format where if you're going to play an early to mid Arc 5 format, this is the one you play. I am going to go ahead and just straight up say this. This deserves to be in the top tier format section. This is the Edison of Arc 5. This has all of the playable decks from the beginning of the Arc 5 era. Burning Abyss, Shadal, uh, Cleefort, Necroz, as well as a bunch of new stuff. It is a clash. This is af directly after the release of Clash of Rebellions, but before the, re uh, before the ban list that came through and murdered everything. It is a format that I think deserves to be looked back on. You have Clownblade as one of the main new things because you have all of the uh, perform ages that got released here. Yes, this is before Breakers of Shadow, exactly. You have Brilliant Fusion, which is your Seraphonite engine, which you're going to see played a lot in this particular format. Um, you have Cosmo, who has not yet gotten Dark Destroyer. This is first wave Cosmo. So you're talking Slip Rider and Forerunner with Cosmo Town. This is before they became an actually like really powerful deck. This is what uh, this is what the deck was doing. Uh, you also have Cleefort that is still fully playable. Basically, this is all of the early Arc Five decks with Necroz's Silver Bullet knocked out of its chamber. It is a really really solid format that needs more heavy look back also you have infernoid uh that is another thing i need to talk about here where is it someone has to have played it with void imagination where's void imagination am i going crazy was void imagination not legal i thought void imagination came out in clash of rebellions yeah it came out in clash of rebellions why are people not playing void imagination in this infernoid has decatron and void imagination at this point uh you also have and I know that I'm probably going to get a little bit of flack for this. You have really early Draco Pal uh, being available to you because Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer, and Ignister Prominence are both available in the set. Granted, they don't have all the support that would actually make them really good, so it's not really viable, but I'm sure that with a little labbing, this format could actually become a great encompassation of the early Arc 5 era. Also, I really do want them to develop out this uh this section of the format because there is a space between this and pepe that is absolutely ripe to talk about as well uh we, with the release of the pendulum magician structure deck uh the format completely exploded open again uh at that point though we lost a our vanities and soul charge legal so soul charge is at one vanities is at one this is a really solid format if you're looking to play like actual arc five you also have uh like directly after this you have the dimension of chaos uh block which had the uh dimension of chaos which gave us cosmo dark destroyer but you also had uh the pendulum magician structure deck that gave us wisdom eye oaf dragon those uh, that made it to where Cosmo and Pendulum Magician, or an early version of Pepe, were both really, really solid and playable, and honestly needs a little bit more attention. Unfortunately, Format Library does not have it listed here, and I did not put it into my uh, thing here, but it should be talked about more. And for lame ass guy's sake, yes, that is the format where I won my regional, uh, is in that dimension of Chaos and Pendulum Magician structure deck uh, block right in there uh directly before pepe pepe format i'm gonna go ahead and just let you all know right now i would actually put this down with airblade this format is unplayably bad you had everything you needed to just go off if you had any two pieces of your deck on turn one, you were winning the game. In the TCG, Cyber Dragon Infinity came out at this point, uh, as well as Trap Tricks, Rafflesia. So effectively, your turn one was going to involve you making a three material uh, Stellar Knight Ptolemaeus, I think is what it was, uh, who could detach three to rank herself up into a light rank five, which you would go into Cyber Dragon Nova, which then went into Cyber Dragon Infinity. 
you had Trap Tricks Reflesia, which was able to access your trap holes directly out of deck. Standardly, you'd be playing Treacherous Trap Hole at that point in time. Uh, some builds played the, gui the Guiding Ariadne line, which allowed you to pop it with Luster Pendulum to search for a Solemn Counter Trap, which was a whole nother can of worms, because Solemn Strike came out in this list as well. Uh, basically, if you want to try and go back on this format, this version of it is unplayable and konami knew this they released their adjusted list directly after ycs atlanta which is where this format was held uh and it basically went and completely killed uh the deck's tier zero nature didn't kill the deck outright but it killed the deck's tier zero nature basically exactly what Lamas said if you go second you lose that is the format and unfortunately it was just unbearably bad uh how Ever Draco Pal format, which came directly afterwards, it took that adjusted list, which was only six hits. It was three bands and three limits, and let you play with that instead. So the bands here were Damage Juggler, Plush Fire, and Ptolemaeus. The limits were Luster Pendulum, Monkey Board, and Skull Crobat Joker. Yeah, Plush Plush Fire speed running. Plush Fire, uh, was that Bosch? I thought that he came out in Dimension of Chaos. Yeah, he did. Uh, Dimension of Chaos. No, the one who's, uh, the one who's speedrunning life over here is Monkey Board, uh, getting itself put to one literally a week after he came out, and then immediately banned after. Draco Pal format is actually a format that I think could be looked back on pretty heavily. Uh, although, granted, most people are not going to look back on this specific format, they're going to look back on the format that came after this, which we'll cover very shortly. Uh, all in all, though, uh, Draco Pal format, I use Draco Face Off because the other picture was screwed up. Um, Draco Pal format, I think, is one of those that could be considered good for a few games. It, it's solid, but it has a better version that is like waiting in the wings. Uh, it depends on how much you like Pendulum. If you don't really like Pendulum, you're not going to like this format because this format is very Pendulum dependent, but it was no longer a tier zero mega threat. There were other options. Okay, thanks to MBT, this format's getting a lot more attention than uh, than it has been previously. And similarly, we played this exact format on his episode of Retro Rumble that he was on. Uh, so, Monarch format. This is where things start to get a little bit shifted. There was another ban list that followed the adjusted list. Uh, notably, Chicken Game got banned, Wavering Eyes got banned. Thank freaking God! Uh, but also you had things like Wisdom Eye going to one, Norden going to one. Norden had only just come out at this point. Thousand Eyes Restrict back, Ignister Prominence to one, Draco Face Off to one. Uh, basically taking a lot of the problems from the last format in Pendulum and bringing them down to the level of everyone else. Beyond that though, uh, you see the Monarch structure deck came out around this time too. Uh, as well as Premium Gold 3, I want to say. Uh, there was a joke at the time. So Cosmo at the time was an extremely expensive tier two to three deck, uh, which it's, it's funny we say extremely expensive two, tier two to three deck now because the only expensive parts of that deck was uh, three Dark Destroyer, which was 120 each. It's funny how we say that's expensive uh, back then. And nowadays it's uh, <laughs> kind of the norm, unfortunately. Um, the point there being, though, is that Cosmo came out, uh, got reprinted in Premium Gold 3. There was a joke going around at the time of uh, Abu from Aladdin uh, swinging, uh, swinging around a Dark Destroyer and says, Look out, he's playing Cosmo! And like, you idiot, we're all playing Cosmo! Because <laughs> the deck basically become, becomes extremely cheap to build at that stage. Uh, but you also have Extra Deck Monarch, which is, I think, one of the more interesting developments of this particular era. Uh, the Monarch structure deck came out and really pushed the idea of don't play an extra deck. You need to play your Monarchs. Uh, but instead, what people decided to do is they went in on all the turbo options that Monarch gave and came to the realization that the Prime Monarch, their main new swarm trap, allows itself to be summoned as a level 5 light monster. A level 5 light monster. Yeah. Uh, 
Rank 5 Turbo kind of became the name of the game for that. On top of the fact that Seraphonite, one of the main things that you would actually want to use to enable your Monarchs was also level 5, uh, Extra Deck Monarch just kind of became a thing. And honestly, good. This was probably one of the more interesting developments the community made in this particular era. Uh, you also have Magic Specters, which, were, uh, which actually made Pendulum still pretty playable. Draco Pal was really nerfed at this particular stage, uh, but was still hanging around. Cosmo, like I said, was cheap now. And then Burning Abyss Phantom Knight, otherwise known as PK Fire. This this particular deck became a thing with the release of Premium Gold 3 as well uh, because of Beatrice. Beatrice was a OCG import card uh, because, so at the time it was very, this is what kind of started the trend. At the time, there was only one TCG exclusive archetype at a time. You had, uh, with uh, the Zexal era through most of it, you had Noble Knights as the TCG exclusive. Then once Arc 5 hit, you it, it shifted over to D Burning Abyss. After Burning Abyss, they decided to shift it to where there's going to be two TCG exclusives at a time, at which point they did, uh, they did Cosmo and Kaiju. Uh, and then following that would be the next round of TCG exclusives, which I can't remember off the top of my head. I want to say it was Spiral and Subterror, but I'm not positive. When they did this though, the OCG would eventually get these cards. And when they did, the OCG would print one singular new card for the archetype. They still kind of do this now. Uh, Beatrice was the first time they ever did it though. And it basically instantly reignited Burning Abyss as another tier one threat. So when we got Beatrice in the TCG, uh, it made Burning Abyss really powerful once again. As such, we got PK Fire, which was basically utilizing the Burning Abyss package with the Phantom Knight core, and really made that push that forward. Uh, as for playability, uh, I'm going to be completely fair here. I do think that this is a format that actually does have bones and can be played realistically. Uh, it's probably above Perfect Circle, honestly. Uh, it can be played uh, in a retro sense and should probably be explored a little bit more. Uh, I don't think it's nearly as good as uh, Clown Format, though. I do think that there are some things that hold it back. And that's namely in that I don't know if you have ever played a freaking match in this format, but depending on what deck you're playing, it could be a war of attrition, and it is not fun to get there. Uh, namely because Pendulums. Uh... I don't know if you guys watched the episode of Retro Rumble that I did with MBT on this, but there was a match, I think it was Cleefort versus Draco Pal, where I was consistently just spamming out a full board of pendulums and setting solemn strikes to keep him from going off, and I eventually decked him out. It was... Some matches in this format can be miserable, but there are also some matches that actually can be really, really fun. And I do think that this is one of those formats that should probably be explored just a little bit more. This is listed as ABC format, but really this is Invasion Vengeance format. This format has three major releases that change things. Uh, the first was Invasion Vengeance, which gave us access to the Paleozoics as well as the Metal Foes. We also got Structured at Kaiba, which gave us access to the ABCs, which as you can see is what the format is named after. The third thing it gave us was Dark Saviors, which is sold to us as a deck building set to kind of revitalize what Destiny Heroes did, but in reality was a Dark Lord uh, big buff. It gave YouTube net deckers Dark Lords. And Dark Lord is a really solid deck in retrospect, like you can actually go back and lab it pretty well, but at the time was a bricky mess that no one really was able to see success with. Uh, the big thing, though, is that with the Paleozoics came a certain Exceed monster that I think we need to talk about first. Totally awesome. It was introduced to us as Treat Toad through our reveals and was changed at the last minute to make us all want to... You guys are probably familiar with this card, mainly because of Pote format a little bit ago. But yeah, Totally Awesome's kind of been a thing for a while. And yes, it did get limited once. Uh, it got limited... It got got limited and then semi back in 2020. Uh, this was during COVID though, so. 
as such, we have a lot of really interesting decks here that actually all have staying power. Uh, ABC is the one that the format's named after, but Paleo Frog, Metal Foe, Awesome Hero is one of my personal favorites, but I do recognize that its game plan is fairly linear. All in all, this is a format that I actually do think could be labbed out a pretty solid amount. And as such, I'm actually gonna bump it up to here. Uh, solid format with little issues. Uh, it really is a solid format, but the issue is a lot of the decks kind of do accomplish similar goals, as has been previously discussed, I believe. It is a format that I do think could be looked at a little bit deeper. Okay, it's time to talk about rate. Uh, Raging Tempest uh, gave us the Zodiacs, more specifically gave us Rat Pier. And, uh... <laughs> Rat Pier kind of caused some problems, as you can tell here. 60 card Zodiac was a problem, but even more serious of a problem was kind of what came attached to that. Before we get into the actual look into the deck list, not counting Zodiac, what do you think was a problem card of this era? Grass is correct, but she is adjacent to grass. So, Grass Zoo format uh, has one very major issue when you're looking back in a historic retrospective sense. Uh, a certain $2,000 elephant in the room. Uh, basically, if you wanted to play a milling deck to its fullest capacity at the time, uh, you needed a copy of Minerva the Exalted Lightsworn. And as you can see by this time period, we're talking early 2016, she was still only available as a prize card. You were shelling out around $2,000 for a copy of Minerva if you wanted to play a grass deck at its full potential. In a look back sense, that's not really an issue because you can just play her and not have to buy her because you're playing using online sims. Yeah, you usually wanted to. That is another big thing. Uh, she she was probably one of the more egregious examples of a prize card seeing play. Uh, but regardless of which, Grass Zoo format is very heavily dominated by Zodiacs, but a very interesting thing about that is that a lot of what Zodiac did at the time was Dryden with a couple of pieces backing it up and pass. The only reason that Zodiac is looked back on the way it is, is that, that it is one of the most consistent engines in the game that actually does something. Uh, namely, it gets you to Dryden plus a rank four at minimum, or it gets you to a whole slew of things if you're playing one of the combo variants. Uh, as such, you'll you notice that pretty much all the decks here are Zoo, Zodiac, 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 or you're playing a grass build. Was the Norden Loop legal? Technically, yes, but the Norden, the Norden Loop didn't really come into effect until the next format. Uh, yeah, one zoo is full combo. As such, uh, while I don't think this is unplayable garbage, it is a format with glaring issues, and I would probably put it somewhere around here. Uh, it is a tier zero format that is not completely unplayable, though. I will give it that. There is a lot of fun things you can do, but a lot of the major issues comes from this, as well as the fact that grass is legal. Uh, don't worry, though. We'll get there. As for a tier zero format that actually had a lot more interesting things with it, I'm probably going to start a fight. <laughs> I'm going to start a fucking fight. <laughs> this is a format that I am going to be completely fair actually has a lot of bones to it uh, this format has some really fun decks in it I recognize that a lot of them are Zodiac adjacent but you have a lot of different ways that you actually can take this and it namely comes down to the fact that the true Dracos were an option uh Really, at this point in time, you had Zodiac, you had True Dracos, you had Metal Foes, you had zombies, uh, Zombie Piles with Shiranui and Grass, you had Paleo, which was also still a really solid deck, you had Invoked Artifact Wind Witch, which was my personal deck at the time. Like, there's a lot of really solid decks that can be labbed out here, but a lot of people choose not to because it was a time of Zodiac loops. If I'm not mistaken, Rat Pier is at two at this stage. 
yeah, Alistair was introduced here as well, because uh, we had fusion enforcers. That's kind of, that's what I was trying to get to, uh, the invoked package. Uh, basically, there is a lot of really interesting things you can do with this format. And here, let's take a look into one of these. Uh, while yes, th pretty much all of them have to be zoo adjacent, unfortunately, Masterpiece makes it unplayable in Norden Loop. Uh, I disagree. Um, Yes, the Norden Loop is annoying, uh, but at the end of the day, you're do you're basically expending a ton of resources to do something that you should be able to do with basically anything else. Uh, there is a lot of actual diversity within it, within it once you look past the fact that every deck is running Zoo. Uh, yes, Zoo is in everything, but Zoo is more of an engine. It is not the deck itself. Uh, there are times where it's the deck itself, but it is not always the case. There is a lot of actual diversity that can happen from this format. And I really do think that this is a format that we should be looking back a lot more on. This is the format that Zoo got 32 out of 32 out of YCS. That is true, yes. Because again, Zodiac is an engine. It is not just the deck itself. But a lot of people do did play it as the deck itself as well. It's complicated. My point being, yeah, see, even there's another one, Pendulum Zodiac. My point being is that there are a lot of different things you can actually do with this format once you look past the idea that it's a tier zero format with Zodiac. It is a tier zero format with Zodiac. But it's not all Zodiac Zodiac. It is a lot of diversity within it. it it's kind of a similar case to what I was saying with Ravine Ruler. Uh, even though Dragon Rulers are played in almost everything, there's a lot of diversity within that. And I really do think that that's something that should actually be explored more. Well, we had a good thing going, didn't we? Uh, so, full disclosure, I did not actually play any of these formats in their actual time frame that we're about to talk about here with the Vrains era. Uh, I was on break from the game, but I very much know my thoughts on this already. So, first of all, and it's Link's time. The problem is that while Link's crippled every deck in the format, there's one deck they didn't really cripple that much because they, re they released Mrs. Radiant at the exact time of Link's taking hold. As such... I'm going to drop it all the way down to here, honestly. I don't think it's unplayable garbage, but it is very heavily hindered by that. Yeah, first time first time or win learn VFD is a problem. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, we'll talk about VFD in a little while. I do have virtual world format on here. <laughs> don't worry, we will talk about VFD. Uh, but the long and short of it is the fact that they released Mrs. Radiant right at the start instantly made an issue. Was that about tier zero formats? Uh, yeah, spiral format. I'm gonna just go ahead and yeah. Uh, ugh. look, man, spiral format is just one of those that just it absolutely makes me sick to my stomach. It, yes, it's just more bore. It's a more boring version of zoo format, basically. Uh, I mean, Rapier went to one, I believe. At the oh no, yeah, Rapier's at one at this stage. Uh, so it's just not. It's not something I ever really want to look back on. Spiral combos just infuriate me. Now, Magician format, though. Uh, this one is a little bit more interesting, I think, than what we were doing for the others. So, with a lot of the Link issues starting to be handled, Firewall Dragon going to one, Spiral was still a very major threat in the format, but Magicians actually had a playing field. I will, I'm going to be speedrunning a lot of these Rain Zero ones. I'm just going to be completely fair. Uh, while I do think it's a format with glaring issues, I do think that it actually has a lot more playability to it than, uh, than the previous format does, because there is a dynamic going on there. Uh, Master Plan is still at three, so Spiral is still a major threat, but there is a little bit of counterplay now that Firewall has been at the very least limited. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and put both, both of the, you know what these are. I don't even need to go into that. We're, we're just gonna, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do that. I I'm skipping both of those. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about FTKs the format. It's just not something I want to do. Okay? Can, can we please be in agreement on that? Cool. Glad glad we're in agreement. Party of one agrees. Okay, so striker format. This is what many people consider to be the start of toss. 
a lot of people have a lot of fondness for this particular format. I mean, this is the release of Striker. We got Magical Midbreaker Field going to <laughs> going to one. It's just look. The problem here is that sh I'm gonna just I'm okay. Full full disclosure. I'm gonna be grouping all of the uh, all the toss formats kind of together, and I'm gonna be go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and just group them all right here. Uh, the only one I'm not going to group into that is the Orcist one. It has glaring issues. A lot of glaring issues. Full power Striker into full power Thunder Dragon into what is actually Toss format into full power Orcist is... Or not full power Orcist, into unencumbered Orcist is just kind of a nightmare to get through. So let's just leave those here and we're purely going to talk about actual Toss format. Toss format. So, I'm using this instead of Format Library for uh, this particular case because Format Library is extremely uh, not intuitive on this one. Uh, Toss Format, uh, in like trying to get it off the ground, people are have basically come to the conclusion that we're going to be using the July 2019 ban list, and more specifically, we are going to be using uh, directly. Uh, we're going to be using Portland YCS Portland for this. Uh, this there is a very specific deck that was lapped out at this stage being uh thunder dragon crusadia orcus uh as an actual potential tier uh tier zero threat but it still hasn't really been uh, uh kind of like sorted out at this stage in reality toss format really is between the toss decks P for Thunder Dragon, O for Orcus, S for Salaman Great, S for Sky Striker. Uh, all four of these decks have legs in this particular format and uh, would very much not have legs. Uh, a lot of these would not have legs directly following as Orcus would kind of be the only one left uh, of the four uh, as we enter into the next format. Uh, I will say the diversity between these decks. It, yeah, there's also rogue stuff like Endymion. Uh, and, but what I will say is that Toss Format has a lot of issues, uh, so I can't regu I cannot put it in top tier. However, I do recognize that it is a solid format. Uh, I'm I'm between putting it in solid format with little issues and good format for a few games. I I'm gonna just go ahead and bite the bullet, and I'm gonna actually put it up here, probably just above Critter. Uh, realistically, this format is one of those that actually can be labbed out and solved uh, to an insane degree, but it's fine where it is. It's better than the boat. Yeah, exactly. It's better than wind-up hand loops for sure. All right, so rocket format. Um, this is a really interesting one. So they list it as rocket format. In reality, we are actually on sizzle format is what a lot of people have come to refer to this format as. Uh, I've actually done a retro rumble on this particular format with Jaxel. And I will say from my experience on this one, this one was actually kind of fun, all things considered. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this format, namely because you have things like the Shadal structure deck. Uh, Orcus has been now nerfed to be more in line with everything else. Colossus is out. Azathoth is out. Mirage Stallio is out. Uh, Electromite's out. Like a lot of the things that were like distinct problems are gone and we can actually move forward into a interesting space for now and with that said i'm actually i actually am going to put this one just above toss i actually do think uh is this before idf yes this is like a little bit this is currently you have you do have invoked Shadal, you just don't have the Dogmatica part of it. Uh, the Shadal structure deck was out at this time, so you did actually have Shadal stuff to work with. Uh, I actually do think that this is one that could be explored probably a little more than Toss uh, and actually lapped with. And with that, we are entering the COVID era. The next bunch of formats uh, right in here is going to be what we're talking about with COVID being absolutely rampant. Uh, starting with add emancipator format uh yeah no we're just gonna go ahead and just drop that right there apologies to anyone who actually liked block dragon add emancipator format but this shit is completely unplayable for me i will never go back to that uh honestly um yeah just no <laughs> please no uh infernoble i'm gonna be completely fair this was the format that i did not really play at all 
However, I am aware of the hand loops. Because I do not know it enough, I cannot play it and place it in unplayable garbage, but I am going to put it at the bottom of format with glaring issues. The, frick, the fact that you had freaking smoke grenade hand loops, it's just... Uh... All right. Now on to the formats that I actually do know. <laughs> Sorry. Virtual world format. I'm going to place it right here in formats with glaring issues. <sighs> actually, no, I'm, I, I'm going to be completely fair. I'm going to place it down here as well. It, yeah, VFD really did ruin a lot of things. I'm just going to go ahead and put put Gar Dragon LP down here. This is Dragon Link format. Uh, all of these kind of encompass the same feel at the time of just absolutely unfun things to play. Yeah, it's just not not a fun time at, in the slightest. Yeah, so Dragon Link's been knocked out. Uh, okay, we're finally getting back into a format of things that actually happened. Like, or of things that actually are happening again. So we are still in a remote dual sense at this point, but we're finally getting back to a little bit of physical. Uh, this is a stage where you have Tri Brigade Zodiac because uh, they just got Barrage back at this point. Virtual World is still palling around without the VFD, which makes it a lot more of a fun deck. Drytron is currently doing Herald Turbo, so uh, uh, with that. Sky Striker is a solid option, and Prank Kids is just starting to be discovered at this point. Uh, it's not quite at the stage where it needed to be uh, because it's still missing the adventure package, which actually made it like really playable. Uh, but it did a lot because if I'm not mistaken, they have Meowmu. Yeah, they have Meowmu. So they could still do some stuff. Yeah, exactly. They have Meowmu. So uh, with that, with that said, uh, I am going to be putting this one actually up in good format for a few games, but near the bottom. It, like, there are, there are some glaring issues, namely Drytron. Ah, no, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll bump it up. I, I'd put it above Android, realistically. Uh, there is a lot of actually, like, playable stuff here that I think we could realistically look more into. Uh, now that some time has passed, but this is one of those formats. It's it's recent. That's why people haven't really lapped it out. Bird up format. I'm gonna be fair. It's it, it to me. It just felt like more tri brigade stuff. It felt very similar to the other. I would probably put it lower than this. I would probably put it down in formats with glaring issues. Probably somewhere around here. Adventurous next format. Yeah. Bird up. The long and short of it was you're making a uh, you're making utopic Draco future a UDF. It's just it's an annoyance more than anything else. The fact, I will say though, I do not think that birds deserve, deserve to die as hard as they did. Oh, wait, right. Uh, we had Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer already at this point. Yeah, no, uh, this can stay there. Uh, we're looking at, this is a uh, Sword Soul, DPE, Burn Up, all those. Uh, they, it can deserve, it deserves to stay where it's at. Uh, this, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the DPE one is directly following the adventure package. Uh, so this is, yeah, Prank Kid Adventure, Sol Sword Soul Tenyi, Flew on the Rees, Wrote, uh, we have the based pile. <laughs> yeah, everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say it right now. I'm going to put it at the bottom of good format for a few games. This is not a format that I think should be looked back on. It is very varied. But in reality, almost everything is doing the exact same thing. At the end of the day, if your combo fails, you're make you're gonna make a plant Verte Anaconda, and you're gonna make DPE. It's just like yes, it's varied, but it's not varied. Also, Scythe Turbo. So no, I I wouldn't go any higher than that. It's time to talk branded fusion. Where's Scarlon? So this is the brand. This is the set time when branded was like the hot deck on the block. We're still dealing with the adventure package at this stage. I think Prank Kids has been taken behind the shed. Yeah, Meow Moo is gone. Uh, aurorodon has gone. Verte and Aconda has gone. Uh, so a lot of like the major problems with the format were taken care of at this stage. Uh, some piles were still go getting on because we had some interesting things come back. Uh, I will say I think that there... Yeah, this ban list was a massive change and was so good. But the problem is exactly 
Halk is still legal. So even though we lost Aurora Dawn and even though we lost Verte, you're still doing Scythe Locks because now what you're doing is you're using the Punk Engine to get there. Uh, as much as I love Punk, I do not like it when Punk is just being used for that. Because keep in mind, not only do we have Halk, we have Chaos Ruler at this stage. Chaos Ruler is still legal and ugh, look. I love this. I like this format, but it has some pretty glaring issues. I'm probably going to drop it down here as well. It deserves it, quite frankly. Time for Pote. We're discussing Pote. I actually think that this is an interesting format. Uh, unironically, I do really think that this is an interesting format. The main thing that it's held back by is the fact that Sprite Elf um, does the stupid toad thing, and you're, you're just playing Danger Tier everywhere. Pote is a good format. Uh, and as such, I would actually probably bump it up here to solid format with little issues, but you are really just between either Sprite or Tear at that stage. Um, a little bit more interesting, though, I think, is they what they've listed here as Minneapolis format. Uh, this is, I think, a much more interesting point. Uh, this is what I refer to as Davil format. So with that, Snow is gone, so that problem has been taken out behind the shed. Ronin Toten's gone, Chaos Ruler's gone, Halk is gone. We are in the stage where we can actually play decks without the stupid things, like that actually made the format un... I'm actually going to bump this down. Uh, that made the format not fun the last time. Uh, this is the one that I would actually put up in solid format with little issues. Uh, you actually have counterplay now because you have bestials. The bestials actually able to counter out the tears made it interesting. On top of that, Sprite still was able to do things, they just weren't able to do stupid things. Uh, because they still had elf. Sprite still had elf. Uh, honestly, the format is really solid in that regard. I would actually probably bump it up a little bit higher than that. And then you have tier zero. This is the Ishizu tiers. So here's the thing. As a format that should be consistently played in the actual game itself, no, I do not think that this should have stayed around long. As a point of skill expression, I am going to be completely fair with you. Y'all are wrong. Y'all are absolutely wrong. Tier zero, yes, was a problem. Yes, needed to be dealt with. However, tier zero is one of those formats that if you're going back to play it in a retro sense, you're looking to play the mirror match. The mirror match is not the worst one. It is actually a very skill intensive one. The fact of the matter is, if you're going back to play this in a retro sense, you know your opponent's gonna be doing the exact same thing. Both of you are going to be on tier. Is it? It was Dweller Turbo. i sorry that you think that, but it really wasn't. Uh, tier 0 was probably one of the most interesting of the Tier 0 formats uh, because of the interaction that it provided. There was a lot of interesting back and forth gameplay, and I really do stand by that. With that said, I think we've officially done it. We've gone through every single one. Uh, as for formats that need to actually be looked at, I stand by it. These two are probably the biggest ones that we need to actually look at labbing out more. Meadowlands deserves the attention. And Clown Format actually, I think, could be labbed out to something really solid in the long run. Uh, but yeah, please. If you disagree, I know you do. Comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinions. Drive up that engagement. No, but seriously, I do actually think that anything in uh, in this solid format with issues up deserves to be labbed out. I really do think that we have a lot of potential formats that we can look at. The problem that I think most people have probably realized is that we are looking at pretty much anything from what is effectively 5Ds onwards. There are very few formats that are playable pre-5Ds. Uh, we have, I think, a total of four on this list. I'm also going to be making this tier list maker public, so any other content creators who want to put in their own discussion on this, feel free to. Please, I ask you, give me your opinions. With that said, I will see y'all next time. Take care.
A huge shout out to my Dark Law level patrons. Damn it, Marka, Heyo, Jukes, McJaga, Otaku GamerX, Prinrin, and Riser339, as well as all of my other patrons over on Patreon.com. If you'd like to support the channel, consider following me on Patreon, where support tiers start at as little as $1 and you get access to all my videos a day early. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, that way you don't miss out on any future videos. Every subscription helps out more than you think. Thank you all again, and I'll see you next time.